Hello everyone, welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob and today we are starting our blind first playthrough of the solo only campaign game Legacy of You, published by Renegade Game Studios and Garfield Games. Uh, one player only, ages 14 plus, 60 plus minutes. So converted to stream time, this first playthrough, explaining the game, learning it, playing it together for the first time, looking up rules and stuff, should be nowhere less than seven and a half hours. <clears throat> uh, so buckle in. I'm just kidding. Hopefully it's not that long. Uh, but yes, it's a solo only campaign game. This was uh, full disclosure, not provided by the publisher. We purchased this uh, from a local game store on the recommendation. I think the one who started it, I know other people recommended it. But the original person who brought this to my attention uh, was, uh, I'm going to say, super fan of the channel. There she is, Janet Williams. That's right. I just made that up. Super fan is now what you are. There you go. 
She's really the mom of the channel, but super fan sounds way cooler. Hey, Janet, thanks for bringing this one to my attention, by the way. Um, I did honestly look into it and was like, okay, it seems cool. I like some of these Garfield games, little resource management kind of stuff. And it was solo only, had a campaign. I kind of watched a rules video about it, read about it a little bit and was like, oh, damn, it's not coming out in Canada till July, but it's already out in the US. That sucks. So I pre-ordered it at my local game store and like literally the next week uh, it shipped. And I was like, huh, I shipped like a month early. So I got it last week or this week. No, last week. I was going to stream it last week, but I just couldn't get myself to it. Uh, every day I was like, just kept waking up super sick. It was like, I had the stream scheduled, um, but unlisted. And I was like, every day I woke up, I was like, today's the day I'm going to start this campaign. Because the beauty is, I didn't have to play it to learn it, which is kind of scary. Because I only learned it by reading the rules. I watched the rules video like a while back. It didn't seem too bad. But... There is no, like, like a lot of the legacy and campaign and story games and stuff we play, there's no, like, resettable little intro scenario you can play to get the base rules down. Um, it's just, start the campaign, here come the spoilers. So I didn't want to spoil anything for myself, and I thought it might be fun to play on stream. I don't think it's that complex, but we'll see how it goes. I mean, it doesn't seem like it starts out complex, but obviously, like, new things will be added to the game, like any kind of campaign game, things will change. I don't know how much they change, no spoilers, um, but we'll find out, we'll play together. So spoiler warning, of course, um, but thank you to everyone supporting the channel, allowing us to purchase games like this, not be paid by publishers to play games, uh, and for me to do this full time, I appreciate it. Uh, and thanks for coming and joining. You guys are gonna play along, so you're gonna help me out. Uh, I know someone at the end of yesterday's stream on our Hadrian's Wall stream uh, mentioned that uh, get ready to lose the first couple games. So I'm prepared. I just wanna wrap my head around the game, right? and try it out. I'm sure you'll get an idea in the first like stream how it goes, uh, but depending on reception, how you guys like the video, watch the video, share the video, that kind of stuff, if it does have some good reception, I'll keep playing the campaign. I definitely want to play it at least a couple times, see how it kind of evolves and what's there, and then maybe I can leave it for you guys to play through if you like it, but um, if I'm having fun and you guys are watching and we're all playing along together, like might as well keep going, we'll see. Uh, so yeah. I don't know. It's, it's so weird. Like, it's so weird that I've, I can't even say, like, yeah, it's a good game, or, uh, yeah, so far I've had fun with it. I, I literally opened it up and put it on the table today, so we'll see. Uh, Janet says, we are one and one so far. Won the first just barely and lost the second. And I think that, so if, if people are losing the first one, if you do squeak out a win, this has, like, one of those, it's a good design, like that self-balancing mechanic uh, that we've seen in, like, the Pandemic Legacy games, like, if you start winning, the game's gonna slowly smack you back down a bit to try to balance it out. And that's why in a game like this, where like you could lose or win in seven games, but if you win and lose a few in the middle, you could be playing up to like, what, 13 games, 12 games, something like that. So there'll be an average in there where, you know, most people probably land somewhere in 10 games or something like that before you win or lose, just based on the self-balancing. So if you win, it makes it harder for the next game. If you lose, it makes it easier for the next game. Uh, which is a cool balancing thing and it's good. So like I, I don't feel that bad if I lose like I I'm okay as long as I don't lose seven in a row uh, But I don't mind taking a couple games to kind of like understand the game learn the game figure it out um, And we'll see how it kind of changes up and if it's interesting or not and it's fully resettable fully resettable It's just like a not many extra components for the campaign. It's just like a deck of cards um, that I'm sure change up the game, but there's a, a book of secrets like a storybook that will add Things to the game, new story new rules and things is what I've been told. So uh, This should be interesting Yeah, and it's supposedly every time you play through it since certain things are shuffled You might experience some things in a playthrough. It says I think in the rule book I think it was a rule book I read or it was on board game geek someone said like you can only experience like 40 to 60 percent of the game in the first run or something like that. Maybe it was this game. Uh, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I uh, mean, I've freaking looked at so many games in the last couple of weeks. Um, yes, it is this game. Regardless of whether you win or lose the campaign, you will have seen only 40 to 60% of the hidden content. Combined with the randomness of how victory and defeat cards are revealed, this makes each campaign feel unique. My goal is to play through it once. Uh, I don't know if I'll replay it twice, but... At least want to play through a couple sessions, I guess, should be my low bar. We'll see how that goes. 
But yeah, hello everyone. How are you doing today? Hello, hello. Uh, hey, Bob. How's it going? Uh, on my way to the airport instead of being forced to work. So I get to enjoy this. Excellent. <laughs> awesome. Instead of being forced to work. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't sound good. Uh, Ninja Art says, Hi, Rob and everyone. I'm on vacation, so no need to lurk and work. <laughs> Edward, how's it going? Hey, you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, don't steal my jokes. I was saving some of those good, those good you jokes for later. Or hey, hey. I've been practicing them all morning. Oh, you're playing it like co-op. Ah, like, yeah, like Mel and I played a hop low. Yeah, yeah. And how eventually I want to try to teach her final girl and play that with her to teach Mel that game because she seems to be interested in it, but just never take the time to sit down and like play it with her. But I want to do the same thing with final girl. Like take a solo only game and try to like play it like co-op, you know? Uh, but yeah. All right. Bear with me. Sorry. Clean house a little bit before we start. <laughs> the job is fine, but it distracts me while I'm lurking. Oh, stupid job. Uh, Frederick, how's it going? All right. Uh, okay, let's talk about the game, I guess. At least what I know about the game. Uh, so this is like new. It's like. Barely brand new, I guess. So yeah, warning. Uh, I'm playing, I guess, new hotness on the channel. It's kind of kind of a rare thing, I think. But uh, yeah, it's this this recent release. Uh, but it works good because I've been in, I've been kind of hungry to play some solo games lately and stuff. So um, it kind of kind of came to my attention like the right time, I guess. Because uh, some of the other games I want to play, I, I kind of need to wait for Mel to get some free time. You know, Kyle to come back around and. Finish some campaigns and stuff. Uh, but yeah, Legacy of You, 2023 release. Build the canals, repel the barbarians, and rise to fame as you the great. You the great. Uh, so yeah. Weight, 2.81. Uh, supposedly, very strange. Community says it's only best with one. Hmm. Strange. More than one? Oh, oh, okay. All right, Janet, looks like Janet voted in here uh, that it is recommended with more than one, but most people say it's not. But did those people try it with more than one? How do you know? <laughs> Anyways, uh, so yeah. Yeah, 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 there you go. I don't know. All right, let's, let's, let's go to the story part here. Uh, introduction. During the reign of Emperor Yao, the people of ancient China were constantly plagued by deadly floods along the Yellow River. Eager to put an end to the devastation, Yao selected Gun, one of his officials, to devise a plan. After nine years of failed attempts using dams and dikes, the Gun's employment came to a questionable end. After his passing, Yu inherited his father's work. Learning from Gun's failures, Yu set out to construct a series of canals to direct the surging river into nearby fields and smaller waterways. So again, it's a solo-only, fully resettable, non-linear game, campaign game, I guess, uh, which you step into the role of legendary hero of the Zaya dynasty, you the great. That's right. Me the great. It will be your job to build the canals ahead of the impending flood while also defending your growing settlement against neighboring barbarian tribes. So we practiced this yesterday. That's why we played Hadrian's Wall first, because we wanted to play a game by the publisher with literally the same theme of defending tribes, trying to build defenses, uh, and, you know, um, improve our little village and town and stuff. It's all the same. Uh, so we're playing basically the same game without a pencil. Uh, just kidding. Uh, with each story, as will be shared, a new gameplay element's added. Uh, the campaign features a self-balancing system, which I did talk about. And it ends once you either win or lose seven games. Very interesting way to do it. So if you just stink seven times, you're out. Get out. So you could win, like, six times. But if you lose that, that last one, you know, like you hit seven losses before you hit seven wins, it, you're, you're done. But then you got a lot of gameplay out of it, so, I mean, you can't really be mad. Uh, as long as you're having fun. So this is the thing I was like, oh, damn it. Like, for streaming, right? Like, I want to feel like a little more like I know what I'm doing. But I didn't want to play with spoilers and stuff. So for the most campaign games, you might expect to find an introductory game to get familiar with the systems. 
this is not the case for this game. Screw you. Uh, instead, you should be confident to jump right in and start progressing through the campaign. And don't worry if you end up losing your first few games. Okay, so I, I mentally prepared, all right? I, I'm going to not flip the table. I won't angry rage quit the game and campaign after one loss, okay? Uh, this will still help to unlock new elements and to progress the story. So we're going to have some fun with this one. And don't open a storybook. No peeksies. And don't peek through the story deck. Or there literally is a hand that comes out of the box and will slap you if you try to do this. They did add that to the game at least. That's what they, with the money they save from not making a tutorial scenario, they added in an automatic hand to, to slap you if you try to do these things. You have to show the card has a symbol on it like this or else you get smacked. Uh, okay, so this is what I wanted to show. The aim of the game. While elements might change from game to game, the aim remains the same, to finish the canals before it's too late. You win the game if you successfully build all six canals and survive till the end of the current round. So you'll still have to deal with like the barbarians attacking even after you like may have won. You might not survive the full thing and still lose. So three different ways we can lose. So one way to win. <laughs> three ways to lose, all right? So due to the flood, and I'll show this all on the board in a second. It'll make more sense. But if the flood, you know, gets out of control and we're not fixing the river ahead of it to keep the flood or the water, you know, in check, uh, it will spill out, kill everybody. We suck. Okay. Uh, if the barbarians overrun us, so the whole time we're working on our damn river uh, to try to save the people from being flooded out, uh, barbarians are pillaging and we got to like buy them off or punch them in the face. Okay. Due to damage, you can lose if you need to destroy townsfolk. So constantly townsfolk are getting attacked and destroyed or dying while we're trying to build this, this canal. Like some people could die while doing it. Because, uh, you know, the safety policies and all that weren't that great back then. Uh, we have to destroy townsfolk. And if we, like, literally all our townsfolk have died, we're also done. And they can die from a few different ways. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Never tell me the odds on ways to win versus lose. I know, it's like, let me see, how can we win the game? Oh, that's it? Okay, let's see how we can lose freaking scrolling list going down and we're like oh god oh god I feel like i'm playing nemesis or something oh. <laughs> uh aloe zingy if i'm saying that right which i'm probably not welcome to rob's gaming table where i pronounce everything incorrectly and have to be corrected by my chat all the time uh instant sub for playing this i am only one loss three wins in and this game is already tied for my favorite solo board game Whoa, bar set high. That's awesome. Welcome, welcome. Welcome. Oh, Velko's here. All right. I'll be looking to you, Velko, if we need any assistance. Uh, yeah. Just because of your psychic abilities. Not because you may have never played the game or you're, you know the game very well. Just because your psychic abilities are, are amazing. As we learned yesterday. Oh, Cynthia doesn't know this one. Uh, okay, Cynthia. Uh, since you like Hadrian's Wall and stuff, uh, I haven't played this myself either, but I'm going to ask you to leave after seeing your haul from UK Games Expo. Uh, for your own sanity, I'm going to just ask you to leave. <clears throat> Are you gone? Are you gone? I don't, I don't need you buying another game. Uh, yeah. And then blaming it on me. Yeah, yeah. Your, your counselor called me. Your, your psychiatrist also called me. Uh, yeah, yeah. I hear you blaming things on Kanji and myself. I, yeah, I heard. I heard what you said. <clears throat> yeah, see, Brian, I got your back. Even though you make me cry at night. <clears throat> going to sleep with your mean words. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> hey, Brian, how's it going? Uh, Greg, hello. <laughs> oh, I said it perfectly. Damn it. <laughs> Oh, I'll mess it up later, don't worry. I'll forget how I said it even. Okay. All right. Uh, so Legacy View. Again, if it came from... Uh, if it's a Shem Phillips game published by Renegade Game Studios, then 100% uh, you know the box dimensions. Okay? They're all the same. And sometimes the box is jammed full of components, you can barely close it. And sometimes they have lots of space and extra air in there and actually provide an insert. 
So it seems just like Fancy Play Games, it took a few years to figure out that people might like organization, but I really think they only did it because they actually had the space for it. And they were like, crap, we need to fill the box with more because we only make one size of the box game. So uh, I just want to show this because I like it. And I want to shout this out because more games need to do this, uh, including games from this publisher. Make bigger boxes if you need to, please. Uh, charge a couple more dollars, it's fine. So uh, there is storage for everything. And on the bottom of the box, it kind of like tells you where things go. So normally I could play out of this box. I don't need to sort everything in these little tubs, but I just like to do it to keep it clean on stream and stuff. Uh, so Because you are limited by components. So if we need some shells and there's no shells there, uh, we have to get some shells back in the supply or else we can't take any. And it goes through all of this stuff. So we're limited by the amount of uh, little bits in the game. But you could just literally slide this beside you at the table, uh, which I like, and just grab your bits out of here. And it's nice and big, the, it's, the wells are deep, so everything's spread out. So it's like very easy to find the colored meeples you have. I was debating just playing like that. And then also all the cards have a divider. So as we play through the campaign, you know where to put back cards, like cards that are out of the campaign go in the history that you won't see anymore unless you reset it. Uh, we have our little sealed deck here for the story cards. So this is where new cards will enter the game. We're told to grab numbered cards. I, I haven't opened it yet because we haven't got that far yet, but I took, I opened everything else uh, so we can shuffle it all up on stream together and set it up. Uh, but I just took everything out of here, but for setup and teardown, like beautiful. It's a very lighter campaign game, campaign wise, right? Like there's not 18 sealed boxes full of surprise stuff. This is literally all your surprise stuff right here and hidden in here in the storybook, okay? Again, we're only playing a two point, what is it, 2.81 or something complexity game? So it's not like the usual campaign games that play on the channel that are like a four complexity and the boxes, you, I, I, can't, I can't put them in front of me without blocking my face, it's not one of those. But uh, we'll see how, how deep it goes, how crazy it gets. So it comes with the rule book, and of course I have to give my warning, it's one of those games, uh, as expected, where it has its own little language, but it's like not many symbols. But what I think is, most of them are probably hidden in here. Uh, so it's like, I don't know how many pages, but uh, this little storybook will, will teach us things as it adds things to the game. So we'll set that aside uh, for later. And we'll go through this together. Again, I've never played this, so we're going to have to figure this out. I read through this rule book once last week, once yesterday. So hopefully we can figure this out. But some of you have played this game already, so feel free to yell at me if you're like, dude, you missed this, or this is how this works, or don't forget this action. Because, uh, yeah, we're playing along today. We're playing along. So, uh, I guess we could just go to like the setup, right? Yeah, let's, uh, oh, campaign setup. Uh, yeah, I wanted to highlight this. The little winning and losing deck I think is really neat. So, of course, this is the deck that you draw from at the end of a game you lose. And on the back, depending on how you lost, by what lose, loss condition, uh, you'll read a specific storybook entry. And this is the final card you flip when you lose your seventh game in a row. So as we draw cards out of here, I'm sure they go to the history and eventually we'll draw these. And these are shuffled. We're going to shuffle these. So these will be in a different order than maybe if in your campaign, right? Um, and depending on how many times we lose, we may see a different amount of cards than you would see in your playthrough or in a second playthrough or third playthrough or whatever, right? So part of the setup is shuffle these up. If they fall and re get reshuffled, it's all good. doesn't matter. So... We're going to put these back uh, in uh, victory and defeat cards. Perfect. And then we have the same thing for victory. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever see the back of one of these, so I might as well look at one right now. Oh, they might have a story entry on them. Okay. Let's not look at any more. But hopefully we see a few of these. Maybe not today. Maybe not tomorrow. But in a future episode, maybe. <laughs> And then we have the final win one. See the guy's face? Look at this. He's like, yeah, I'm a winner. Look at him posing for the camera. And then there's like, you know, come on. Oh, the defeat hurts. Stop losing. Okay. Okay, so we'll put those in there. Those are done. Those are off to the side. We'll deal with those later. Okay. Here's a little board. You set up this little board. I'm going to try to explain this in my own words as best I can. As we usually do. Okay. Uh, so like any, I mean, man, this reminds me of like, what have we played? Paladins of the West Kingdom, Architects of the West Kingdom, uh, or sorry, Paladins of the North Sea. No, Architects of the West Kingdom, <laughs> Raiders of the North Sea, uh, still recovering. Okay. Still recovering. Um, 
Paladins of the West Kingdom, Architects of the West Kingdom, Raiders of the North Sea we've played. What else have we played by this publisher? Hadrian's Wall. I don't know what else. I kind of lost interest after playing so many games that looked the same. But uh, anyways, it's another one of those games, same graphic design and everything. Uh, same art as some of their other games. I haven't played all their games or anything. Um, but it's, it's kind of easy to understand. It's like one of those resource management games where we're like, trade this to get this, to then spend for this, and, and places work here, and gain one of these, and trade in some of these for this, to spend to build this, and uncover this, and then cover this to get this resource. Very similar to the game we were playing yesterday, Hadrian's Wall. In that respect, it's just one of those, same genre, same genre. Um, so we'll have things covered up on this board, and the resources we're playing with today are, uh, we have provisions, we have little shells, we have some uh, sticks, wood, I don't know. We have brick, okay. Uh, we have black meeples, yellow meeples, red meeples, blue meeples, white meeples, okay. Bunch of that stuff. That's the resource we're dealing with. Nine different resources, okay? Plus cards, I guess. Cards are multi-use cards in this game, which I love. Uh, so cards, uh, we have, here's our, our main card, so part of the setup. Uh, we're gonna shuffle, these are the townsfolk cards. Townsfolk cards, I shuffled them a bunch already, but we'll shuffle them more. Okay, townsfolk cards, we start the game with 10 of them, as indicated here, I believe that's what that's to remind us of. I think, I, I don't know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, okay? These are, it's kind of like our, it does a few things. Uh, this is like kind of like a, will slow down or accelerate the, the, the speed of the game and how fast rounds kind of kind of go, or kind of, I guess, how many rounds are in the game. Uh, it's also kind of a lose condition. These are the townsfolk cards that, as they get attacked and destroyed, removed from this deck, uh, if we ever need to remove one, and there's no discard pile here to shuffle back in, or an exhausted pile or something it's called. So we have our own little kind of health and actions and, and our little townsfolk here, okay? We have the extra deck up here, but as cards get destroyed from this deck, the deck we kind of care about, uh, they get thrown into the discard pile of this deck, uh, and we'll have a row of these guys up here. So part of setup is we're going to reveal a few of them across the top here which uh, they increase in the amount of provisions you need to add them to your discard pile so we can like kind of buy them, kind of like a deck building game, right? You're kind of buying them from the little market row up here and they get increasing costs. They do shift down as you take them, right? Um, but there's a competing annoying card up here, the Barbarian deck, okay? I'll show you these cards up close, kind of explain what, what's going on with them. So part of the setup, we need to shuffle the Barbarians. And again, remember the lose condition is if ever seven Barbarians fill up this row up here. So barbarians are filling in from the right to the left as we go on in the game. And based on how many of these little red symbols here are uncovered, that's how many we draw at the end of the round to refill this row to the right. And it will push off townsfolk to the left, basically, if it needs to. And so over the game, we have six townsfolk to start, but then eventually it will whittle down and more barbarians will come in, unless we're defeating them uh, and getting rid of them. And we kind of need to do that. So that's one of the fires we need to fight in the game is keeping the barbarians out of our, our hair. Get out of here. You can pay them off. You can pay them off uh, by giving them this instead of them attacking your townsfolk and destroying a card off the top of the deck. Uh, or you can defeat them by, I guess, throwing meeples at their eyeballs and uh, just beating them. If you do that, you gain these rewards. But to do this, to actually throw meeples at them, you have to hand them groceries in their hands so their hands are distracted. So when the meeples are flying at their face, they actually do damage instead of them swatting the meeples away. Okay, that's how I understand how it works. Okay, so to even access this barbarian to fight him, I need to play three provisions and then two blue meeples and a red meeple to fully get rid of them as an action during the game. If I don't do that at the end of the round, I will de have an attack against my townsfolk or I can pay them off by uh, giving them two shells but he'll still show up tomorrow trying to attack me again. So you gotta like defeat them to get rid of them. Yeah, very thematic, Roman, very thematic. That's exactly how the theme works, okay? All right, townsfolk cards, multi-use cards, okay? I love multi-use cards in my games, you guys know that. So, townsfolk, uh, I could just play this as an action and I can gain a white meeple, or I can remove it from my deck. So it doesn't go in this little discard, it goes back to this main deck, to get both these top two resources. 
There's these food symbols, which it tells you in the rule book will be added to the game later, so ignore them for now. And then at the bottom of the card, this is like the start phase of the game, uh, where you like, in any of these resource management games, where you like get your starting resources, which of course we can build up our engine, produce more resources as the game goes on, so we have more to work with every action phase. This little symbol is like the horizon phase, I think it's called. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, uh, harvest, sorry, harvest phase, harvest phase, uh, where we harvest all our goodies. I could play this card under here if it's available, and right now I have one space available to tuck a card, uh, but these spaces will be covered up and I have to build these spaces to unlock these little, these little tuck spots, but they'll give me more stuff to play with uh, in, the, in the beginning of a round. Okay, and resources do carry over except for cards. So you have to kind of play all your cards, do something with them on your turn, otherwise you lose them at the end of the round. But all the like meeples and provisions and shells and wood and yada yada, uh, that stuff you keep from turn to turn, okay, which is kind of neat. So those are the multi-use cards. I think that's everything they can be used for that I know of so far, except for the food thing, I don't know how that works. Um, and yeah, so we start with 10 cards here. I don't know how many we draw oh i think it's just here right the four we draw here and then i guess maybe we could maybe earn others oh yeah i guess oh that draws a card when you put a meeple there a worker placement so there's some worker placement and some like deck building okay um and the resource trading and exchanging and all that so on the board uh i guess the the main win condition that's probably a good place to start uh is there's this canal right so as, as we go through, there's this, this, you know, the raging, raging wave over here, uh, works its way through here, and eventually, you know, falls off the end of the board, we lose. Or, if it hits one of the canal spaces we haven't built up yet. But I just want to show you underneath, we're going to cover these. Okay, we're going to cover these, like, with uh, cards, you know. And I guess I could just do that now. Um, yeah, let's just do it. we got to shuffle up, I think, some of them. So there's certain cards, uh, see this one and two, these will go in the one and two spaces here, and then there's the three and four, five and six, uh, but we shuffle these up, and we randomly, as you play, put out one here, and one here, okay, uh, and then what do I have, oh, I only have two for three and four, okay, so those will go here, and then I have five and six, uh, these two, I guess, I don't know, okay, so these are like, see the way that the canal is not built yet. So this like raging river comes down. If it ever lands on a card that I haven't cleared yet, uh, we lose. Okay. So I have to worry because as this deck empties and gets shuffled down here, so I can count these cards and check, right? But as soon as this deck gets emptied, so it can get emptied from me drawing cards, it can emptied from these jerk faces attacking it, right? Anytime I need to shuffle this deck, uh, this wave moves forward and the raging river comes down right so you can kind of know how quickly you have to build these spots and to build them the resources here are on the top so i got to spend like two white meeples and two shells for the first one if i do that uh, i gain these resources on the bottom so you gain a little brick uh, uh wood and you actually read a story uh entry from like the book of secret stuff but then you see when i remove it oh perfect i made a little spot where the water can get the hell out of here because i don't want my village flooded right and underneath, it shows you the symbols that are underneath the card, so you know like what you're trying to get uncovered here. But there is some trading in the game, so these spaces uh, I could trade, for example, like in any of these resource management games. In this case, I could always at the beginning of the game trade three shells or three shells for a brick or a wood, right? Those are two trading options. But as I uncover, I can uncover more trading options, so I can, I can get uh, the ability to trade two shells for a provision. I also can uncover a building spot. So these little squares, as I build uh, things from down here, I can cover up this and I get the resource that's underneath uh, as I cover them up. And then I unlock things down here, which I'll explain in a minute. Uh, but so as long as we build, and you can only build uh, when this little boat is there to do your building from, I guess. So you got your uh, workers here, and you're only allowed to build once per round. So if the, sh the ship starts here, so that means I could build here, and it's kind of like a reminder if I built or not. So if I build, I take this away and set it aside, and at the end of the round, part of the cleanup step is to put it back on the next unbuilt canal space. So I can't just build like a whole bunch of things in the same round. So you gotta kind of like pace yourself, um, but you just gotta stay ahead of this thing. 
Okay. So this is one of our loss conditions, and it's it's gonna be chasing us, right? So we gotta stay ahead of it. Okay. Uh so these can all I guess go back into the box. This is what are what are these called? Canal cards, I guess. Okay. Now down here in the bottom section of the board, uh kind of related to these little building spots, uh, we will set up these. Little farms, I think they're called. Okay. And here I don't remember what these are called. What are they called? Okay. All right. Let's go. Outposts. Okay. We got farms. We got outposts. We got huts. Okay. Okay. Uh, so let's put our little outposts here. Our little purple buildings. Okay. And you could build these buildings, okay, as you see here, harvest, that's start of the round crap, right, to determine what you're going to earn. So here it reminds you, you can get nothing, okay, but if I build any one of these in any order I want, cost me a white worker, a brick, and a, and a stick, okay, I could build one of these, so I could even build like this one first, and this will help me gain more stuff uh, at the beginning of every round. And this tells me I can take a meeple of any color except for white because it doesn't have white in the little uh, candy stripes there. So I can't, I can't get white workers for that, but, uh, and down here is your default starting resources. Okay, I don't know if this is better. So yeah, right here, every harvest phase, we're gonna draw four cards, gain a white meeple, gain a shell, gain a provision, plus for each one of these we built in the game, remember to build them, you gotta have a space to put them up here. Uh, we now, can have our white workers count as blue, and our blue count as white, for example. And again, there's one of all the colors there. And to build one of these, there's the cost underneath, okay? But for every one of these we have uncovered, next start of round or start of year or whatever it is, uh, we're gonna get extra white shells based on every little uh, purple one we built. Okay, probably check with chat here, make sure I'm explaining things right. Uh... <laughs> Oh, well, there's some discussion about the resettable stuff. That's cool. <laughs> Kit Carpo says, dang, another game on my to get list. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, and then over here we have uh, these worker placement spots. So we have this one already. By default, we have one exposed here and we have one slot to tuck a card underneath. If we place a worker here and you can only place one worker, Okay, any color, we could get a provision, okay? And this worker will get back at the start of our next round. But these spots over here, uh, another random setup, because the back of these cards are all different, okay? So this also changes up how the game kind of goes. Uh, the difference with these other buildings, like the farms and the outposts, these have to be built from left to right, okay? And on here, we'll show the cost. Okay, we have one, two, three, four, okay. And the other two, I guess, to go back in the box, I'll uh, put it with our huts and canals. So we'll just throw it back in here with these ones. Yeah, nice little spot for it. So next time we set up the game, we may have a different amount of cards in there, which is neat. Because some of these might read story entries, supposedly, and I'm assuming we have a deck of cards. I'm assuming it's gonna change a bunch of these other decks I'm playing with right now. Uh, it's just, just an educated guess. Um, but to build each of these huts, it looks like they have the same cost, but on the back the reward's different, and underneath it's a different spot to uncover, right? So it looks like we could place a worker to gain any other worker but white. Here we can place a worker to pick one of these resources. Here we could place a worker to draw a card from our townsfolk deck. Here we could place a worker to gain two white shells. And remember, when we build one of these huts, which these huts are these little green things going on here, Okay, we have to have a space to build it to, like, it's just sitting here unbuilt, but uh, when we build it, we have to have, like, one of these square spaces along the canal exposed to put it on. Remember, it has a reminder here of what is hiding underneath this card. I don't think, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spots to put buildings, but we have, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 buildings. So I don't think you can ever build everything to put it on there. So you gotta make some choices as we go, right? But remember, these only go from left to right. 
So it'll unlock more places to tuck cards, unlock more spots to put workers. Uh, what else? Is there anything else? Let's check. Yeah, yeah. There is, yeah, sorry. Yes, Janet, I saw that in the book. There is a, a symbol that has a white worker in the stripe. So uh, you can only gain the color of worker back that is actually the colors listed in the picture. But yes, I did see they had one with the white. I couldn't remember if I saw it on a card or a board. But uh, yeah, I did see that. Oh, right here, duh. Any worker, and then any colored worker, not laborer or white, okay? Well, they actually, in this game too, have names of what they are, but I probably won't remember them all. Laborer, fighter, rider, spearman, and archer. Okay. So here's the round structure, so we get our goodies. We take as many actions as we want. We stop when we feel like it or when we run out of stuff to do. We return the barge if we, we built one of the canal spots in a turn. This is a spot to put the barge if you're gonna have this laying at the table, I guess. I thought it was a spot to put a sticker or something to add a new rule, but it's not. Uh, then we need to suffer attacks from the barbarians. Then we refresh the card row of barbarians and townsfolk. Okay. Are we good? I think we're good to start. I don't know if I missed anything. Okay, here we go. We're drawing our cards. Okay, we're gonna get all our goodies. One, two, three, four. We got our four townsfolk cards we drew. Okay. We get one white meeple. We get one shell. We get one provision. And we don't have any old posts built. And we don't have any of the farms uncovered. And we don't have anything tucked. And I don't know where else you get goodies from. But I think that's it. Oh, this blue meeple, get out of here. Anything else I left from demonstration? I don't think so. Holy jeez, I just noticed this. To build these last spots, we need all these workers. But I know we also need workers for these guys. So we're going to be just like loaded with workers by the end of this. I'm excited to see that if that happens. Hey, how's it going? Good afternoon. Well, or good morning for you. Hello, hello. Okay. So what do we want to do with these cards? So here, here's my options that I know of. I could just discard this, or sorry, exhaust this guy, I think it's called. Just put it back in, in my deck that I have to get a yellow. Or I can say I'm going to destroy this guy to get a yellow and a brick. Or I can tuck them underneath to start getting a blue meeple at the start of every year going forward. And I don't know the value of the meeples yet, like which, like maybe fighters are more often needed for barbarians. And I guess laborers are more needed to build things, so white workers are the builders, kind of. I don't know. But, so like is maybe, maybe I need a white worker, you know, to my white worker income more laborers need to happen maybe i tuck this card or is a black meeple so rare that i need to again i've never played so i'm like this is what goes through my head when i'm trying to understand a euro game for the first time trying to understand the value of all the economies and the systems right that usually takes a playthrough or two to understand <laughs> uh oh this guy could get us a provision and a shell so i guess this kind of tells you the economy in the game too right so like one worker is just as valuable as two of the little cardboard resources. That's kind of how I see that, but maybe not. Maybe that's just the balance of this card. So this ability is as good as this, you know, and this is as good as this. Or is like stake so hot, you know, that these things are like more powerful because you really, really want stake in the game. You know what I mean? So like who knows, right? So it's kind of crazy. Like, what, what do we want to do with this stuff? I could also start spending these resources. Or can I? 
I could put a worker here and get a provision. That's probably a sucky trade, but if you're desperate, maybe. I don't have any sh enough shells to trade here. I don't have enough shells and workers to build this. Uh, I don't have enough stuff to build one of these. I don't have enough stuff to build one of these. I don't have enough stuff to build one of these. Oh, what I do know I can do for free, free 99. I could take this guy, add him to my deck down here, or I could just say, get the hell out of here and we'll see you later and put him in the discard, the, the bad discard pile and just take a white worker, I think. Or I could pay the provision to take this guy or this one. You know, maybe I want to build my deck up to buy me some time. This is like all the options I haven't even started playing yet. Janet says, first round, get provisions to recruit townsfolks. Mm, build up our deck. Seems smart. I'm very limited in options, technically, if you, if you think about it. Because even if I just said, I want to build a canal because that's the win condition, I need two white and two shells. Two white workers, two shells. Well, I'm a little short. Do I have that in cards I can get rid of? No, I can't even like destroy them to get that. And it's not like I can use a yellow worker instead because I haven't unlocked, you know, the, uh, the color swapping or whatever this is, the, you know, making them uh, act as different colors. The, fle the flexibility uh, spaces. <laughs> uh-huh. What else is under here? Okay. Yeah, like... It, you know, if I'm thinking like these kind of games like yesterday even, we were like, okay, if you don't know what you're doing, just try to build your production early, right? To give you more resources as the game ramps up. Makes sense, right? Oh, to fight this barbarian? Two blue and a red plus three provisions. So, uh, or I just pay him off with two shells to buy us up some time. So, provisions to recruit townsfolk. So how we get provisions, like, is this a good trade to put a worker here to gain one provision to try to get two more cards? And with the two provisions I have, should I just trade her away to get two provisions? That sounds like a better trade, maybe. You know? Should I, should I tuck this guy under? Is he a good play? Should I tuck him? Or do I need his provisions right now, you know? Should I tuck him so I'm drawing a card, getting an extra shell? That seems good, right? I, I don't know which one's better to infuse our starting turns every round going all, all, like from now till the end of the game. Is it better to have a blue worker every round, a white worker, draw an extra card and get a shell? Drawing cards will speed up the game. It will speed up this thing moving because then we draw through a deck. Maybe that's bad. Maybe that's better later. Tuck the blue. Tuck the blue. Okay. Yeah, see, like this is cool. Janet, I appreciate it. I have no idea what I'm doing yet, so I, I'm, I'm happy with any decision. <laughs> I have no clue. This is our learning game. Welcome to Rob, plays super inefficiently, and by the second game, hopefully has figured it out. All right. We tuck that one. Okay. So we can get this guy for free. Can we just take him? Or is there a way we can get the shell to build the first one of these? Yes, we can, right? Should I take this guy and just throw him away for the white meeple? Is that stupid? Or did we have a white meeple on one of these? No, we didn't. Chuck the last guy for the shell and the provision? Yeah, I'm thinking that too, right? Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. I think that's good. Okay. Oh, this guy was up here. Like, I don't know how hard I need to be pushing things. But, like, I would love to have built one of these things. But I don't have brick. But if I build this, I could get the brick and the stone. Or, and the stick. The brick and the stick. But then I won't have a white meeple yet. But at least next round I will. Man, I don't know. I want to toss this guy. Is that bad? <laughs> Janet, no. Don't leave me yet. <laughs> So, uh, Aloe Zingy, I don't mind everyone playing along for sure. Like, I'm still going to make some decisions on my own. Uh, but yeah, feel free to play along in backseat game. Like, I'm okay with it. Uh, yeah, because like, again, there's so much hidden information. You guys don't know by telling me like, build this. It's like, but is that the right play? Because you flip it over and who knows what we're going to get, right? So it's kind of fun. 
So I'm just learning, playing along. I don't mind help and tips and stuff. It's, it's fine. It's fine. But I'm also trying to explain everything I'm thinking to let you un understand for those who've never played this type of game or haven't played this game, to help them understand if this game's kind of for them. To, to tell like what options are available, if it seems like something interesting or not. Last one. I always take that first town soak to my, to exhaust, uh, to my exhaust to build my deck. Yeah, I would think going forward I would do that, but I'm gonna do this one, destroy it like this, and, and get a white worker. I'm just gonna try it. Again, I'm poking the system. I don't know if it's right, but that's what I'll do. But you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take these two resources, and these guys are gonna go here. Even though I maybe the white worker cycling through would have probably been smarter instead of the the quick infusion, but I don't know. Let's see. I'm gonna. I want to read in the book of secrets. So honestly, that this little turtle here is the whole reason. I just want to see what's there, and it scares away people who are afraid of spoilers. So we'll have less people in the chat real quick. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, okay, so I'm spending. Hey, okay, here we go. What's it called? A storybook. Sorry, storybook. I keep calling it the Book of Secrets. It reminds me exactly of Sword and Sorcery's like Book of Secrets, like kind of the same size. Okay, here we go. Uh, I built this, so I removed this off the board. Okay, I'll put it there, so I can't build again. Uh, the canal. Okay. <laughs> so we get some more goodies. Okay, and this is where the addiction in these resource management games lies. We're spend this to get this, to trigger this, to build this, to unlock this, to then do this. And yeah, building little engines is fun. Or chains. Chains of resources. So we're going to go to the storybook 42. And now we've uncovered a way to trade for two shells to get a provision or to build something to put it here to get a shell. It's something. I don't know where this goes. Uh, probably back to the box, right? I'll just put it off to the side for now because I'm not sure. But maybe this will tell us. So 42. So spoiler warning, okay? We're gonna read our first story entry, but I mean, you gotta see one, right? To understand like what is even happening to see if this is kind of your kind of thing or not. So there is more story, it's actually story. See if we can zoom it in and not only see that. So 42, right? Just to make sure, yeah, 42. Another canal completed. Another band of rebels seen scouting the camps along the river. The floodwaters flow away from essential lands and into streams and rivers, creating safe land to farm and settle. It is my hope that these men and women will see the restoration of this land and come to help complete this righteous work. In later seasons, we will need to create more canals to take the flood all the way to the sea, where it can finally rest. But for today, we will celebrate the work of our hands. So file the constructed canal card. Oh, okay. So it's going to the history. So we, yeah, it's going back to the box, all right, but we're never going to see it again. We got our first, our first card in the history, uh, which it's got, it's got a lot of room to breathe in there. So uh, hopefully, get some company soon, but we'll see. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh, find card forty six in the story deck and place it face down on top of the barbarian draw pile. I don't like the sounds of that. Better be the weakest barbarian I've ever seen. Oh yeah, what, what number was that again? 46. Okay, we're going to the deck. 46 in the story deck. Yeah, in the rulebook it says that, right? Sometimes it'll tell you what to do with the card, sometimes it just goes back. Uh, anytime you build something, it just kind of goes back to the box to be seen in the next setup, uh, which is neat. But sometimes it changes, which makes sense. If it's adding stuff to the game, it's not going to add it again, so that's why it's removing it. Uh, okay. What was it? 46, right? And there's little numbers in the bottom. Uh, and all the cards we started with in the game have a number zero in the bottom right. So that's how you know how to reset the campaign. Start with all the zero cards when you first start playing. Um, so it's easy to tell what cards you're adding. Uh, I'm not going to look at it. Let's not look at it. Let's just add it. Okay? Let's, let's get crazy with it. Hopefully that didn't make the game super hard all of a sudden. Probably did. Maybe I rushed the build too early, and this game this game is about to teach me no building so fast. Okay, we'll put our little story deck, our story deck back in the box, in our story deck section. Okay, beauty. 
Probably the happy barbarians. <laughs> no need to worry. <laughs> it's going to be bad. I know it. I know it's bad. <laughs> and what's going to happen is that barbarian is going to come out and it's going to say, it's going to flip and say on the card, it's going to say, if you didn't take this card in the first slot and added it here, as you should have, uh, you're going to be punished and you lose three cards from here. That's what it's going to say. I'm calling it now. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we have, this is our stuff left. What are we doing with this stuff? <laughs> uh, oh, we could get another card. Do we do that? Does our provision just get more cards? I don't have what I need to fight this guy. Oh, we need two shells to buy this guy off. Oh, crap. Forgot about that. I totally forgot about that. And we don't have the workers to build anything. Yeah, let's just buy something to put a card in because we're going to lose a card anyway, right? It's that barbarian. <laughs> uh, sure, let's, let's just... Uh, oh, we have a choice. What do we get? Uh, maybe the white meeple one, right? Or is wood more rare? Any recommendations? What do you, what do you guys think? Left card or right card? We're going to add it to our deck, so hopefully it will show up and not just get killed. Or based on the bottom. Like, what, what looks good to you? What do you think? We only want like white, red meeples maybe? Do we want to be drawing cards? Do we want to get provisions and shells? Oh, keep a provision for the next turn? Yeah, maybe. But I just thought let's feed cards in while we have access to them. I don't know. Or, or is maybe we don't need these really. I could get the white meeple right now. I could get the white meeple. Uh, yeah, you're right. I could spend these to just put this guy here and get another temporary like white meeple. And then, and then we can. This is what I like to do: infuse our production. So what? What? Should, let's build a farm. Do we want to be able to take any meeple we want, or is just white meeple the good good thing right now? What with farm should we build? Any recommendations? Or should we get provisions? And then, and then we could build the farm up to one of these places and, and get a, we could get a provision for the next round right away. Yeah, so cool, right? Yeah, yeah, let's build it. Let's build it. I, I mean, I don't know. But obviously, like, the more rounds we're getting production, the better. It might be risky. I don't know. But we're going to do it. I think... Uh, like, white meeples seem to be what we need for this, but then again, for fighting things, like having, having flexibility, right? If you build, I would take the multi-meeple. But remember, it's not white. Like, if we need white, it doesn't give us white. White meeple looks good at start, and you can use it for provision. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, maybe let's do white. Jan says multicolor, though. Like, I don't know when we need to start worrying about barbarians either, too. Like, should we have, maybe we should have that flexibility. And like, are we going to build any of these? You know, like, will it matter? Because if you start uncovering these, then white meeples uh, become even better. I don't know. All right, let's get a provision. Let's just build on the first one here. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so we have a way to get a blue meeple, white meeple, and a yellow, blue, or black, or red meeple for setup. I guess we do want like red, blue for this guy. Uh, hmm. Yeah, that's true. The, the conversion works both ways, right? So if we keep getting blue meeples, they can be white meeples if we uncover this one, for example. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. That was cool. Yeah, I should, I should be remembering to save stuff for the barbarians. But even right now, uh, if I cover this, I only get like one shell instead, but it's not enough to buy him off. I, I don't know.
Yeah, wood looks rough. Like, you need wood all here. You only get wood here. Maybe on some cards. So this one... I guess we just take a black, right? I don't know. I don't know! Okay. Uh, end of round, right? We're just done. I don't... Unless... Oh, we can put this guy here for a provision, right? Because we get him back. Okay, yeah, Minion just said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I almost forgot about this. <laughs> I was like, there's gotta be something else I could do. We have resources sitting here. Alright, so we slide. No, we don't do that yet. We don't do that yet. Let's follow our, our thing here. Suffer attacks. So we have nothing to deal with this guy. So this goes away. Oh no. Oh no, we lost the wood. Okay, that just boom off the top of the deck. That sucks. Yeah, I, I failed on that for sure. That bugs me a bit, but oh well. Okay, that's attacks. Uh, refresh card row. Oh, we gotta return the barge. So the barge now is on the second canal spot. Uh, so these go to the left. We need to draw one Barbarian, so we need to make room for that Barbarian. Oh yeah, this is our new one, right? Oh, you can beat her with, like, wild. Oh, look at this! Smashy smash two cards. Oh, we need to deal with her right away. What is this, though? What is that? Yellow? Draw one card from the top of the Townsfolk draw pile. Two hand unless specified otherwise. Is that this deck? Yeah, because white is our deck. Ready, oh, ready pile, Townsfolk draw pile. I get it. I get it. Okay. This is the yellow deck, this is the white deck, this is the red deck. I get it, I get it. Alright. Alright, this sucks. Yeah, we definitely need to beat her, I think. Yeah, we don't want her stealing our groceries. That's five groceries we gotta give her. Okay, then we start filling in this. I think like this. Pretty sure I did this right. So we need colored workers. Big time for this one. So now we harvest, so we get our our meeples back from here, right? Uh, so we draw four cards. One, two, three, four. Okay. Uh, what else we get? A white meeple, a shell. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have rushed this, right? I don't know. Hmm. And then a provision. And here we get a blue. And here we get... Uh, it doesn't really matter, right? Let's just take a red or something. Because I think we're going to spend the black, the blue, and the red all to defeat her with two provisions, right? Or, oh, we need... Yeah, three. Right? Is that smart? I don't know. Let's count our deck. How much cards do we have? Oh, the, the water's moving, like, in the next, next uh, draw. Uh-oh. Another blue meeple to take? Why another blue? Oh, you're thinking of getting rid of this guy? I want to get rid of this this one because it hurts more. She's psycho. And she gets us another card to here. That's good. I don't know. Or is he better to beat so we can get those resources? I don't know. Hmm. Okay, what can these give us? Oh, you can get us a white meeple. Provision shell, provision shell. I mean, technically, just these two cards alone can buy these guys off for, for some buffer. But I, I want to try to defeat one, I think, right now. Is that, is that too much? Like, too many resources to spend right now? 
And this one, like keep that in mind for a free wood right there or another card for a deck. Free wood. We don't have a brick, so we can't do this again. Three shells for one brick? Holy. Oh, this card goes to hand. Yeah, that's right. So we will have extra options. Ooh. Yeah, let's do that first, right? That'll, that'll help maybe figure some things out. Yeah. All right, so let's, let's spend all three of these because it just can't be white, right? And we need to spend three provisions, which I have. Okay. This is our learning game. We're just experimenting. So when she's defeated, I think she just gets discarded up here. Okay, we'll draw a card from here to go to hand. Oh, it's a happy dude. This guy is happy, and he's got a pet rooster. All right, I want him on the team. We picked up a good, good teammate, or a good player. Instead of black, get blue, so you have a choice of which guy to defeat. I think it didn't matter because I wanted to defeat that one. But yeah, I see, I see what you're saying. That's what the blue recommendation was for, was to keep options open, right? Yeah, like it might have been smarter to try to get these resources first instead of just drawing a single card. Maybe. But I thought I have shells here, so maybe I can buy him off for now. Yeah, I don't know. All right, let's get a couple provisions and a couple shells. I think that's good. I don't know. So we need to save two shells, I think, for this guy. I think, at least right now, how everything's looking. Man, I'd love to build this, but like, we need brick and stuff, right? Oh, now I'm tempted again for this. Tempted, I'm tempted. Oh, how can I get shells in my building? If I can get one more shell, I could do this. Oh man, this would have been a good one to tuck, right? Brick, and this one, wooden shell. These two, man, because this resource is expensive, like it's a, a hard resource to earn, right? And that's what I need to build here. What does this first one do again? A meeple. Hmm. 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 Oh, what's this actually? If I build that, I unlock this action to, I think, yeah, what is that? Your exhausted pile. Does that mean put one of these cards here to take two shells? Probably what I think it means. It just says it, it means your exhausted pile. I don't know, that's what I assume that means. So then what I could do is build, then I have, I could exhaust one of these cards to get more shells. Spend a card from your hand to exhaust a pile to get two shells. Maybe that's what we do. And then we could pay this guy off. Yeah, let's do, let's do it, right? I don't know, we'll get to read more story. That'll be fun. All right, let's uh, throw away a happy guy to get this guy. We'll spend two of these and two of these to build. Take this off the board. Okay, we get a brick and a stick. And we're going to story book number three. Okay. Disaster. The new canal to the east of our camp was nearing completion. Storms have been assailing us like the horrible breath of a dragon. 
forever slowing our progress. The men have become weary. I have been focusing on completing this work with such intent that I allowed carelessness to creep in. A short break in the torrent provided us only a moment to proceed. While I was overseeing the last reinforcement on the canal, I received word from camp that a fire had broken out and part of the camp was ablaze. With so many hands away at the canal, the fire raged like a beast, and despite valiant efforts from those close by, a scorched mess is all that remains of our food store and our tents surrounding and the tents surrounding it. Food will be scarce now. Oh damn. Uh, we have been forging heavily to feed the workers and keep everyone strong. A concentrated and extended effort will need to be made to restore what was lost. Continue reading on the next page. A fool may take some solace in the stories coming from the camp that this was the work of Wuziki, Wuziki? the monkey demon of the river. Bastard. I think I will put my energy into figuring out how to restore our food supply rather than chasing spirit. The burden of this oversight will hang over me for a long time, not unlike the storm clouds that now gather once again. At least the canal is done. File the completed car canal card in the box under history. Okay, okay. Okay, what else? Find card 16 in the story deck and place it alongside the board with the side shown below face up. This is a food storage card. Oh, it even tells you what story entry it comes from. That's cool. Oh, this is the food on the cards. This is how it's going to connect. Uh... In addition... Oh, come on. In addition to the standard rules for winning the game, you'll also need to fulfill the requirements on this card. You cannot claim victory if it remains unfulfilled. <laughs> All right, another loss condition. Sick. Uh, okay, if you're defeated, the food shortage card, food shortage card, sorry, I might have called it a food storage card. Food shortage card will be added to your next game during setup in the same manner. It will remain in all future games until you fulfill it. In order to fulfill the food shortage card, you must place three townso cards from your hand onto the food shortage card in the sequence shown. Each townso card placed must feature the indicated food icon on its left side. To be clear, the first townso card must feature milk. Uh, okay, one milk. The second fish. And the third needs to have a rooster and give you some meat. No, I'm just joking. Uh, okay, third needs meat. Immediately after placing the third townsville card, read this storybook's entry. That's neat. You gain no other benefit from placing townsville cards here other than progressing towards fulfilling the food shortage card. Townsville cards placed onto the food shortage card are locked there until it's fulfilled. You cannot optionally pick them up later. If you're defeated, any townsville cards still on the food shortage card are returned to the townsville deck for future games. They are not left on the food shortage card for your next game. Okay. Well, that's fun. <laughs> so far, I hate the storybook. Uh, I don't want to read anything from there ever again. It's all bad news. You do good, bad things happen. That's what this game's teaching me. Okay, fun. Milk, meat. We need some fish. We need some fish. Oh, we got fish. Oh, we got fish and meat. No problem. So be careful with the milk. We need some. Okay, careful with the milk. We don't care about these guys with the grain. Useless. We're looking for the milk. How many milk guys did I did it to get destroyed? Only one. Okay. Okay. I don't know if there's a rarity on certain things, but we'll try to figure that out. Uh, serenity now. Serenity now. Okay. So now we've uncovered this. We need to shells for dealing with this. Now we need to worry about this. That's a new one. I'm going to get a white worker for this. 
And I'm gonna toss this one for two shells. The trade. Okay. I think I'm gonna do the worker and build action to get our production, whoops, to get our production going. Uh, oh, maybe I don't have to do this. Because I, I have another way to get a shell right here, right? Hold on, let's do that first. Yeah, let's just trade this guy and build first. Yeah, because I don't... Yeah. So, brick, stick, white worker. Uh, I think... I need more. Maybe worker? Yeah, the workers are increasing. Yeah, let's just take a white one, right? I don't know. Yeah, let's try that. It will put, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, so I don't have these yet. I don't have those yet. I undid this. But uh, I'm going to put this here and gain a shell. So now I have the shells to pay this jerk off. I still have provisions to buy cards. I still could get a red meeple to get this going. Sure. So let's take this guy to here. Although, I could sack these two and spend this to deal with this guy, but I'm one provision short. So how do we do that? Couldn't got a provision there. Yeah, I'm one provision short to beating this guy right now. But maybe I just infuse my deck with some more options. Hmm. Two shells equals provision. Oh yeah, right here. I don't want to spend the shells. Oh yeah, but I won't need them. I'm trying to save shells for a guy I'm trying to beat. That's stupid. Derp -derp. Okay. So, let's do this, red. Let's provision, provision. See ya, see ya. So I get red and blue, right? Oh, wait. What did I do wrong? Oh, she only gave me red. I need two blues. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't work. Sorry. I thought I, I thought it was I thought I had the right colors. I don't. I could have covered this to get the right color, but then uh instead of this, but then I wouldn't have the extra white shells to get the provision anyway. Hmm. But these meeples I would have for next round to deal with him, right? Maybe? Or is that dumb? Maybe that was dumb. Maybe that was dumb. Hmm. Hmm. Because I'm going to get blue next round. I can take any color. Yeah, maybe we don't do that. Let's not do that. I don't know how bad that is or not. So instead, let's just take them to our deck. I don't know. Maybe that's bad. I don't know. So we still can pay the guy off. We still have a worker for a provision. I don't know. Build your deck. Yeah, I'm gonna, I, I guess, yeah, that'll buy us time in the game, right? I think. But I know, like, if I, I we're gonna be drawing more of these guys now, because I'm probably pushing the game too fast. So it's got this built-in mechanic to give us more barbarians to deal with. Which maybe I should have tried to get a meeple from this to help with barbarian problems. Damn. Yeah, maybe I'll uncover this too early. I don't know. I'm not sure. I don't know. All right. So these are our resources. Uh, so we're done with actions, I think. We're going to return the barge to here on the last card on the left. Uh, now we need to suffer attacks. Let's just buy this guy off. Here's some shells. Get out of my hair. Okay, now we refresh the card row. We need to draw two barbarians now, so we'll shuffle this guy over. Uh oh, they have archers, we're in trouble. 
Oh, blue and red. That's the hotness that it looks like. Yep, blue, blue are the hotness. Okay, we just learned. Are they a specific? Yeah, they're spearmen. Spearmen are the hotness right now uh, at dealing with these problems. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we're ready for this jazz. I, I don't know. I'm, I may be definitely pushed too hard. I don't know. All right. Uh, harvest time. Okay, four cards. One. Uh-oh. Shuffle time. You know what that means. Yaws is going down the river trying to eat the boat. Okay. We, we're okay, though. If that canal is built, we're fine. We can even let it go here, we're fine. But if it gets here while it's not built, we lose. Okay. Now this guy only costs two provisions to fight, at least. Hmm. Oh, Rooster's back. Okay, that's cards. White Meeple. Shell. Provision. Uh, white Meeple. Any color Meeple. Probably blue, right? Or red. We get a blue here. Any color here. Probably another blue. Oh, but you have blue right here. Let's get red. Let's get red. Let's try to get this guy. Red. Okay. So that was red from here. Oh, we have a red. Duh. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So we'll take a blue from here. We had the red already. We get a blue from here. Serenity now. And what else? Is that it? I want more stuff. All right. Oh, man. This here, too. Oh, okay. What now? I don't need to push this yet. Like, if we look at this, we have kind of like one more round, another round, maybe another round. But remember, we'll lose cards off the top from attacks and stuff. So we got a couple rounds at least, maybe three, where before this moves. Hey, Luke, how's it going? Yeah, maybe that's what we do, right? Just like, kind of chill, relax, not worry about this yet. Oh, I also just noticed this punishes us. We actually start destroying townsfolk. So I see why you should build your deck up early. Because it's going to get riggedy wrecked by you trying to complete the game. Because people die while working on the canals. It gets harder, I guess. <laughs> no, you're, you're, just you're just in time. You're just in time. <laughs> yeah, all hands on deck. Any help, any insight, feel free to throw it my way. It's all good. This is our first time playing. I've never played the game before until today. So I'm learning. But the unknown is stressing me out. Stressing me out. So far, everything I've done that I thought was good, uh, it resulted in punishments. That's what it feels like. Every time I go to the fun storybook, uh, it's not so fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see here. So we have some goals. We want to defeat one of these guys, which I mean we can right now. Should we just do that? Yeah, let's just do that. I don't know. I know order matters probably, but let's just do it. So two provisions, right, to access this guy. Then we throw these meeples at his face. Blue, blue, red. He's defeated. So we get two shells and a wood. Oh, we need a black meeple to buy her off. Uh, awkward. Yes, so instead of taking that extra blue, we'll say we took a black and then we made a blue with this one. Yeah, yeah. I got to remember these cards too. That's important. I see it. everything's like very tight. Yeah, yeah. Black meeple is what we should have took for that. That was the correct answer. Anyone at home who is yelling colors at your screen, you're right if you said black. Uh, okay, did I get all this wood? I need a wood. Okay. 
And he is defeated like this. <laughs> yes, yes. If a game stresses me out too much, yes, I will shred it. No problem. Hey, Dimitri, how's it going? <laughs> Hmm. I want to build one of these, but it's like, I don't know. We could toss this guy for free to get a brick. Building here gets us a brick, but I don't want to do that right now. Trading shells for brick. Is that the way to go? But I need a wood for here still, so I don't have like. Oh, we get a wood here. So we do have the extra wood. Can this work? So we have the wood and the black meeple to pay off our problems. We need to buy our way out of problems a little bit. Three shells give us an, uh, a brick. How else can we get a brick from there? But then we need one more brick. Hmm, I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, Luke, what Cosmic Frog is. Not sure. Not sure. Is there like eventually a way to get that? Oh, there. Uh, worker. That's this is the place, man. That's the one. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, we can just build this, right? Oh, man. Maybe that's what we do. Just build another farm. I don't know. I want to build this, though. But I don't, I don't see the path. Or I want, building this might be good to help us get more shells to then get more of this junk. Uh, can we build a purple? We would need another wood and we'd have to let this guy just punch us. But wood, I don't... I mean, we could trade shells for wood. Then we have three wood. We could throw this guy away for free for a brick and a meeple. Then we could build a farm. And what? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Luke sounds sounds crazy. Uh, but I'm sure it's it's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, here's provision. Maybe I just build that. Yes. Let's do that. Let's just keep it simple. Uh, let's toss this guy for free for a brick. Let's do brick, white meeple, and wood. Build this last one. We'll put it here. Let's take a blue. I think. Sure. I don't know. Uh, yeah, this blue seems like the problem. Mm 
Or maybe we add that guy and we do the brick this way. Yeah, let's do the brick this way. Sorry, I'll spend shells for the brick instead of this guy. This guy, let's just add to here. I don't know. And then... Let's do blue meeple here for provision. Let's do provision. And then this guy's just chilling. I don't know, sure. These guys are just here. Yeah. Or do I stick one of these on the thing already? No, that's silly, right? Although, is there a trick to this where if I fill this right now, reading this will give me some benefit to help me right now? Probably not, right? No, don't trust the turtle. Don't trust the turtle. All those hundreds of hours watching Ninja Turtles as a kid, I thought turtles were good. Was I wrong? All right. I have all this stuff and nothing to do with it. Seems weird. But I can carry it over, right? So let's just do that. Yeah, let's not. Let's see. We're good. We're good. Okay. Return barge. No. Suffer attacks. Uh, so we'll spend a black meeple and a wood. Prevent attacks. Slide over. Yeah, maybe minion, right? But I still have time to do it, right? So I'm thinking like, I need to use these these people and if I put them here, it speeds up the game because I have less cards. So I'm feeling like this bad. Okay, we need to draw two barbarians. Oh, this is disgusting. Oh, another story entry one. That's cool. Harvest. One. Two, three, four, okay, uh, white meeple, shell, uh, provision, white meeple, provision, now, I'm going to take this guy back right now. I'm going to take this one first because I need to see these colors. Now I can decide on a color here. I think it should be like red or black, right? If I take red, then I don't have to worry about feeding this one a black. Or bribing it by sending my people to be kidnapped or whatever is happening here. Oh, yeah. What should I take? Feel like black is the answer. No, I mean red. I mean red. But I need to defeat like more. I need wood. Wood is a problem. Another white worker is a problem. I have extra white though. Oh man. Red, you have black on card. Oh yes, I know, Janet. I forget to look over here when I'm more, I'm only looking at this all the time. I forget to look at this stuff all the time. I need to I need to correct that mistake quick. Okay, so red. Yes, red. But that maybe I don't need a red. If I want to get rid of this guy, because if I can generate a black, then I can pay this one off, so I don't need to worry about it. But this is a problem for eating all my wood. So yeah, maybe I take a black. Then I have a spare black here. Like, I don't know, man, if I'm thinking the right line of play here, but this guy also gives me three shells. But this one also gives me a worker and a shell. No, I want the shells. I want shells. Shells equal goodies. And goodies can help me build this damn thing. I want one. I want these two uncovered as soon as possible. But I feel like I won't get the brick I need until I start doing this. 
there's no way to generate brick at the start of the game. Oh, I should put one of these underneath. But I need to build one to be able to put one underneath. Man, this was my mistake, I think. I feel like I should have held off or, or I, like, I, I valued. I should have seen right here the expense of a brick and a twig are so high. Unless I'm, there's easier to generate shells, but shells are what are needed here too. But like brick, I should have realized brick's a problem here. But this stuff doesn't generate anything. It just exchanges worker for resources. Worker for resources. But sometimes you just have the extra worker maybe. And it can get you what you need for the puzzle. Same with this. It's like doesn't give me extra resources. just adds flexibility. And that's really all these do. Unless on the back of these cards are ways to help. Versus these ones seem to be a problem. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. Lots to think about. I could trash this guy for a brick. So there's a brick. Three shells is a brick if I beat this guy. How do I get my third brick? Building this? Oh, that's bad. But that will give me the brick and the wood I need. And I can build this. Oh, but I need to build this to even build this to cover it. Ah! <laughs> okay. So I can't even build this till I unlock a space anyway. Hmm. That's interesting. But I want to tuck more cards. I need to get more production. Tucking cards. But is the production I should be doing is meeples to deal with this problem? Hmm. Hmm. This game is driving me nuts already. Holy. I know I need the tucking cards for sure. That's what I'm missing. That's what I feel like I'm behind on. Or like maybe I put the wrong card here. Maybe I should have waited one round and tucked something that's more rare. Yeah, maybe like a wood. A wood generator or a brick generator. That would have maybe helped. I don't know. But also a shell generator could lead to more of anything. Or even a worker could lead to more once I uncover these. Or a worker leads to defeating more of these for generating resources off barbarians. Serenity now. All right. All right. Does this one make us? No. So building this one won't get us more barbarians. So maybe this one's okay to do. But this one I should really not do very fast. Uh, so I need one more shell to build. Okay, let's go toss this. And we'll go provision, shell. Okay. Uh, we're going to spend a provision. Toss this guy to get a brick. Um... Let me do this. I'm not really thinking about barbarians. That's the problem, too. Okay, let's build. Let's do it. Oh, I don't know. Three workers, two shells. Uh, brick. Wood. And destroy two cards off here. Oh, it was a milk, damn it. Yeah, that was bad. All right, whatever. And this will go, it doesn't tell us anything else. So it goes back in here. Okay. Uh, so let's defeat, oh man. Yeah, we need black from this one. So let's defeat this guy. Uh, two provisions. 
two blue and a black. Pow, three shells. Three shells equals a uh, brick from here. I could sit on it and not build it yet, right? Because I need wood, white meeple, and black meeple. I don't see a way to get wood. I mean, this we're going to take. Actually, you know what? This is super juicy. No, we'll just take it. We'll take it. I'll, I can get that card by putting yellow meeple here. Provision. Spend provision to put this one here. Okay, let's build this. Uh, white, three brick, and a stick. Uh, or is that bad? That will lead to one card destroyed. Yeah, I don't know. Is that bad? Ah! But I need to tuck. I want to tuck. Yeah, let's do it. Whatever. Provision. Oh no. Better be better be damn good. <laughs> Please. Please let me let me defeat like two free barbarian defeats. Come on. Or one, just give me one. One free barbarian defeat. I'll take it. Please, please. The camp grows more and more each day. Workers pour in from the surrounding lands. Some sent by the emperor, others have nowhere else to go. It is heartbreaking. I must continue my work. We must make more room. File the constructed hut card in the box under history. Makes sense. Find cards one to three in the story deck and file them in the box under huts and canals for future games. Oh, cool. So it just uh, seeds more variability for the later games. Not what I need right now, but uh, okay, sure. Yes. Oh, okay. So it's just more same resources on them, though. That's whatever. Okay. Okay, okay. White. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forgot to tuck. I forgot to tuck. That's what I'm missing. I'm like, I, that's not what I want to do. Uh, this guy's going to get tucked instead. Sorry. Yeah. Tuck. That's what I want to do. I don't I don't want the shell in the provision. Tuck. I almost forgot my tuck. <laughs> Mistakes are made. <laughs> I want this worker placement spot. I want this one. But I have to build from left to right, so but this is still good too, right? Yeah, yeah, Roman. I almost forgot. I was like, oh, I'll just throw that card away. But then I looked down and I was like, no, something is not right. I knew it. I knew I did something wrong. Okay. Uh, return barge. <laughs> Suffer attacks. Uh, I'll spend a black. I'll spend a white. I'll get punched in the face. No. 
That's bad. This is speeding up the water. Oh no. Okay. Uh, now we refresh. We're drawing two more barbarians. So. Uh, oop, 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 oop. Five barbarians. If we get seven up here, we lose. Damn. Huh. Yeah, now they want brick? Come on, man. I just started my brick economy and you're already here asking me for brick. Barbarians? Okay, uh, we're drawing four cards. One, two, uh-oh. <laughs> uh, the water, the water's moving. The water is moving. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, let's do a little shuffle. One, two, three, four. Oh yeah, it was four per turn. I was counting three per turn last time. I was being dumb. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two to spare. Okay. Okay, a couple more turns and this moves again. All right, uh, white meeple, shell, provision. We haven't built any purple huts yet. Uh, white meeple, provision, any color, hold a sec. Uh, oh yeah, we get these back. We get a blue, we get a shell and a brick. Still can get this multicolored meeple, but let me check here. Is there a color that's like I should grab? I mean, I can turn it into any other color here, but like, let's be smart about it. Uh, okay, so yellows are a thing. I mean, pretty much every color is a thing. But like, who are we really targeting here? I mean, we could just go for low hanging fruit, less provisions needed. I mean, one lets us read. Should we do that? Because that always turns out great. Oh, so does this guy. Hmm. Hmm. So I need definitely red for here, but I don't have a blue for it either. But I can turn one of these into the other color. I think red, right? Defeat the one that needs wood to bribe since you don't have wood. This one. So that I would need a blue. Yeah, okay, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah, because at least, like, these ones I need more colors, so I gotta do more to, like, jump through hoops to get the colors. And then black and white, I actually have the meeples, but, like, the barbarians are just, like, annoying. But maybe this is what I should be doing, is just hold them off. But I need to get some out of there, because if I draw two more, I lose. Because then I have seven. Ooh. It's such a struggle between, like, I want to build and progress, but I gotta fight this fire that's becoming crazy, and once I uncover this, I'm drawing three a turn. I don't even know how I'm dealing with that. And then later I need the colored meeples for this. I don't know how I'm dealing with that either. And I still have food shortage problems. <laughs> what a depressing game. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, all right, all right. Well, let's just start with what we know, I guess. Two provisions, two blue, one yellow. To defeat this one, which gives us a shell and draws us a card. Which also speeds things up, I guess. 
All right. So brick we have to satisfy. Provision we have to satisfy. And what else we got? White and black. And we emptied one space. So technically we don't lose from barbarians filling. But I would like to defeat another barbarian. Would be nice. But then I start spending workers I don't have for these. Okay, let me see what I can drum up here. Oh, I had a way to get wood right here. But I still, I need to defeat barbarians, so. Hmm. Oh, look at this. I have one white meeple provision to get any colored meeple. Interesting. <laughs> Good game or losing game? Yeah, KJ, it's a, it's a good game. It's a good game. Very similar to the Hadrian's Wall analysis paralysis stuff, but the difference here is Hadrian's Wall, I got to play it a couple times before I played on stream. This game, I've never played before, and there's so many hidden things in the storybook that I don't know what's going to happen when I defeat this barbarian or build this canal. The game's already thrown extra rules at me I didn't expect to happen. Yeah, I'm building things. I think good things are going to happen, but it seems like bad things happen. I don't want to spoil too much, but definitely a cool solo campaign game so far. But I, I feel like the first games may be stacked against you on purpose, but it's okay. I'm probably playing wrong. But again, I don't know. That's the beauty of playing blind, but it, it's, it's out of my comfort zone for sure. Like I'm, I'm not being able to play a game ahead of time before on stream to be able to like discuss strategy and stuff. I got Janet helping and some others helping in the chat, but like, yeah, we're just blind by the sea of our pants here. Trying to just stay ahead of the, the, the raging water. But it's definitely cool. Definitely quality stuff so far. But yeah, I'll, I'll probably wait to like see how a couple, like two or three games from now, how it evolves if it's, if it still, still keeps you wanting to play. I, that's what I'm, I'm my question I want answered. But so far, everything I'm playing is pretty much I've played before in every other game like this from even the same publisher. I'm just moving around resources and trading. You know, that's all you're really doing. Trying to fight fires and where to spend things and make some decisions there. But there is still some win conditions and lose conditions I'm fighting against. But uh, I don't know if like I'm fighting correctly. It feels a little weird. But it's kind of fun to discover the game this way. It's, it's, it's new. It's interesting. Very interesting. All right. Now what? Can I defeat another barbarian this turn? That is the real question. Uh, hmm. I mean, this is probably just a round where I'm ho hanging on, right? Let's see. I know I can turn this. Oh, but... So let's think meeples, but can we get the provisions? That's the other question. So I know two shells can get me provision. I know a worker can get me provision. That can, we only really need one provision if we can get blue, two blue and a red. And I know if I don't need the black meeple for this, I could spend it to turn it into a meeple I need for this. I can also turn this white meeple if I can get an extra provision. Hmm. I know I want this lumber and this this uh, brick. I want them just for future building. So let's just do that, I think. Okay. Now, how do we get the meeples we need? I mean, should I just trade these all in right now? So I'm not doing anything else with them. I don't think I want to throw them away for any extra goodies yet, but maybe that's smart. Yellow, yellow, red. Yellow, yellow, red. Hmm. Okay, let's take a yellow. We'll turn it into a provision. So now we have access to this barbarian only. And we get 
another provision. With two shells we can. <laughs> yes, the meeples have cute little hair buns. Yes, they do. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Hello, Ultra Violetta. Excellent. Ex excellent uh, insight. <laughs> You're not awake for complex thinking. I love it. <sighs> Oh, won't spoil what happens when you lose, but it's not just a reset and retry the last scenario. Oh, I like that. I like hearing that. That's great. Turn yellow for red and defeat Story Barbarian. Mm, turn yellow to red. Uh... So you're saying to spend my black, but then I have no black for this one. Also, I still don't have the provision, so I would need to spend two shells provision. Ooh, that's risky. Risky. But I can, if I get an extra provision, trade this white for a black. Hmm. Hmm. You know what? What's one hit to my deck? That's fine. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, let's try. I mean, who knows what's going to happen, right? See, at least if I beat this one, though, I get an extra worker. Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's find out. Let's read some more story. So two provisions to access this barbarian. Two red, a black worker to defeat it. And the reward for defeating it is read Super Secret Story Entry 12. <laughs> Risky, your choice. I know, I know. <laughs> oh, so ready now. <laughs> I love the unknown, though. This is fun. Like, uh, the discovery, I should say, of all the weird things that are happening. It is days like this that make me yearn for home. There are still people, our people, who do not see. They cannot see that the work we are doing is all for the Empire. They only see a chance to take. My heart bleeds for them and their ignorance, just as my men bleed for our work to carry on. We pushed back a strong foe, but the cost of our own warriors is high. My thoughts will be with the rest of my warriors tonight as they remember the following. File the defeated Barbarian card in the box under history. Take two damage! And gain three cowrie shells? <laughs> when is it going to get at the story entry that when I defeat Barbarian, he falls back and defeats all, like, trips over the Barbarians and they fall like dominoes? Where's that story entry where I just clear all the Barbarians? Maybe it's an exploding Barbarian. Yeah, or an exploding Barbarian. <laughs> it's all good, Janet. It's all good. I appreciate it. At least we got something. <laughs> uh, let's check our deck. How are we doing now? One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Ooh. Okay, we still have one buffer. <laughs> Damn it. Oh, my. Okay, so what do we got? We still have a provision and a brick for these guys. Hungry boys. But we don't have a black worker. But we can trade two of those shells for a provision so that we do have a provision and a white worker to trade for a black meeple. Yay! Then we can pay off these annoying guys here. And we still have some stuff to carry forward unless I can build anything right now. But it doesn't look like that is the case. Yeah, we're going to get extra brick. We have a brick. Mm -hmm. Mm 
oh yeah, up here, what do we got? Well, we're definitely taking this one. Doesn't give us enough. It, get, it could give us a blue meeple to throw away. All right. What about you? I think we just leave it. But I could spend two shells for a provision to get that card also. Yeah, that's a, Janet. I just said that as your thing popped up. That's funny. Uh, so I'll get the provision to then spend the provision to get this one in my deck. And that makes up for the two we just lost, I guess. I don't know. It is milk. It's milk. That's where we're going to have a problem is milk. And yeah, milk. All right. I think we're done. All right. We don't need to return the barge. We didn't build this one. Uh, suffer attacks. Black meeple. You're good. Provision. You're good. Brick. I hate you. All right. We need to draw two Barbarians, so we're going to slide these down to make room for our new friends. Okay. Hmm. Uh, okay, two Townsfolk. Oh, more milk. Okay. Four cards. We're short on workers. Okay. Uh, one white, a shell, a provision. Uh, we get these guys back. A white, a provision. Any color, I'll do that in a sec. We'll do blue, a brick. And a shell. What color meeple? What color meeple? We have three whites, two yellow, and a blue. I mean, we can exchange one, two. We have a blue here. We could toss for a black, maybe a red. Roman, I think about the sacrificing cards for the double benefit, but none of them have like meeples on them to defeat these guys. That's really what I was thinking. And none of them had brick when I was looking to build. None of them had wood. Like I always look at that. I do look at it almost every time, but I'm like, uh, I don't really need that stuff. But really what I should be looking at is like maybe trading. I think I didn't do it early enough to get extra cards in my deck because I, I could have like tossed this one. For example, to get me three provisions, which would lead to me getting more cards in my deck. So it would probably be a good trade. But I, I don't know when I got that card or what. But for example, you know. Like, I don't know what. It's hard. Like, I don't know if I'm playing too conservative, too aggressive. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. This thing's almost shuffle. Okay, one more colored meeple. Uh, I mean, this barbarian, we definitely need to defeat one barbarian at least. But I feel like once we build this, we lose because I, I don't, I don't see how I'm keeping up. Uh, I feel like it should be black. Get rid of this guy, read story. I'll take a black for that one. Uh, all right, what are we doing? Sucks that I can't I can I can't build this farm until I do this, but I don't want to do this. <laughs> ah, so annoying. Oh, there's two spots under here though to build on. 
Huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, just looking at the barbarians. They're they're getting expensive. Story should be good, right? <laughs> no, it won't be. All right. Uh, let's do it though. Uh, we just need to change a yellow, maybe, or a white. Change a white to a black? I don't know. So two provisions, two black, one yellow. I don't know. Beat this guy. 22. The cheers of victory were still ringing in our ears when a hush fell over the battlefield. The fight appeared to be over, but then something stirred in the dust and blood. A brute of a man who had fought to overcome our forces. Blood streaming down his side was rising. Staggering to his feet, his sword still in his hand, he turned back towards our men, lifted his head, and tightened the grip on his hilt. Ready for more? File the defeated barbarian card in the box under history. Find card 36 in the story deck. Place it face up into the space where the defeated barbarian was sitting. <laughs> We're done. We lost right here. We lost. 36. Oh my god. Okay, he's a little weaker. He's a little weaker, but he's still annoying. Finish him. <laughs> Serenity now. Serenity now. Oh, the game, I'm telling you. It's teaching me over and over again. Stop dealing with story stuff, Rob. Avoid it for now. But I just keep running into it at first. <laughs> now that he's mad, you can't bribe him anymore. I see that. <laughs> I see that. <laughs> no! I think that, that is going to lose us the game. How do we get rid of one more barbarian? I could trade for a provision. Oh, I have provisions here. What do we got? Blue, blue. We need a red meeple, which we could get another provision and a white meeple. Yeah, desperate times, I think. Or a black meeple. Do we maybe just try to defeat him? Or is that stupid? No, let's do it. Let's do it. No, we need too many provisions, I think, right? Uh, stupid game. Provision of white to get a black. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I'm going to toss this one for three provisions. Let's do that. Let's do that. I'll regret that later, but we'll do it anyway. <laughs> All right. Provision, provision, oh no, we need to do provision of white to get a black. Provision, provision, black and yellow. <laughs> Please go away. Please. I just need the space empty. This could be bad. Yeah, minion, maybe. 32. Let's see where it goes. Uh, shout of triumph. Cheers of victory. The enemy is, uh, was falling back. Their champion finally falling over the brave fighters. We thought we would never go down again, but this time he wasn't getting back up. We made sure of it. File the defeat of barbarian six feet under the ground. Okay. Gain one. Come on, man. I thought it would make a couple barbarians run away. Come on, their leader died. The rest should run. Gain one wood, one clay. Like he just drops his stuff out of his pockets. Not what I want. One wood, one clay. 
Do I keep calling brick? Two cowrie shells. Well, it's empty. We don't insta lose. If we build this, we insta lose. Well, can't do that yet. <sighs> okay. So we don't have a black meat pool for this one. We have a brick for that one. We have two shells for it. We have a white meat pool for this. So right now, one card gets destroyed. The water moves up. Now, what can we do with all this fun stuff and this fun stuff? Can't build yet. Oh, maybe I build something here. Oh, no, but I still can't build it. Ugh. Anyway. I can get a provision, but I still don't have enough provisions to fight here. This one, I could get a black meeple by tossing. This one for one provision, I could get a red. So red, a black, and a blue, and a blue. Can I do anything with that? I need a black for this. Red, a black, a blue. No, that's not the colors we're looking for. Oh, sorry, I'm zoomed in. Sorry, sorry, guys. Thank you. Yeah, so what I'm thinking, uh, I have, like, possibility of two up there if I generate a provision here. I could get three meeples, but they're not the colors I need. I don't have enough wood here. I can't build anyway because I'm blocked because I can't do this. I can't change any of them to white to build this yet. I can't start this because I don't have milk right here. Milk's still here. I could add another milk to my deck, but I probably should just get the black to, to please this one. Yeah, let's do that. So those are the barbarians, what they're stealing from me so far. I'll get a blue meeple. I don't know. I'll take the two resources from this one. And a brick. I might as well just take the brick, right? I don't know. Just build up. And maybe when I build this, I can quickly build this, you know? <laughs> and defeat him, provision wake. Oh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. yeah, okay. I think that's it. Oh, no, I could do one here. Provision, right? Oh yeah, I might as well get this card. I might as well get this card. Yep. Okay. Arge's already there. Suffer attacks. Black. Brick. Two shells. White. Refresh card row, so we need to make room for two barbarians. Holy. Oh man, how am I going to do this? This is messy. Okay, harvest time. Four cards. Two, three. Uh oh. Do I need the purple house bill? Is that super important? I kind of want this farm first, but I, I, I don't know. I really don't want to build this and uncover it, but I, I have to, right? I might have to do it soon. Real soon. It makes it easier to kill barbarians. Yeah, true, right? Okay. It, it could have gave me more resources if I did them earlier, too. I don't know if really there was a sweet time for that. So in the deck, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, this goes up. Okay, water moved. 
Okay, that's cards. We need to get our meeple, another shell, another provision. Let's go down here. Blue. Come on. A brick. Shell. Up here. A meeple. A provision. And uh, any color. Man, we have no problem with blues and whites right now. Hmm. Feel like yellow. Yellow, maybe. Well, we do have a yellow here, but we do need extra yellow. Man, yellow like everywhere. But like, I'm looking for the cheapest ones, right? That I need less provisions for. But, like, get the low hanging fruit. And right now, we need to defeat two. But if I could do three, then I'm okay to build. But I don't see that. But at least we got lots of meeples. But black, we don't really need, but we have lots of. I don't know. I'll just take yellow, I guess. Red? Yeah, maybe red, minion? I don't know. But then I also have to look at, like, what can I easily afford to pay them, too, right? And it's, these ones are super expensive on provisions. So it's like, getting rid of these ones costs so much. But I should also look at, like, what do they provide? Because maybe what they provide can help me get what I need to pay another one off, you know? Or build. Like, I'm looking at white meeples and shells, and I'm thinking, great, that can help me build this. I already have enough, but can it also help with this or this? Red for the cheapest one? Oh, I see what you're saying. Just to straight up get rid of this one? Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's probably the call. Yeah, because I don't have red here. Uh, yeah, probably. That's probably the call. Yeah, that's probably the call. I was just thinking I had black meeples, so I wasn't was worried about that one. But I probably just want to be both of them. Uh, okay. And if I can build this turn, I can get red and black from under here, or one of them. That's also a thing. The question is, should I be building this right now, or should I wait one more turn? I guess we just start defeating stuff. Yep. So let's just spend a provision, two blue and a red. Defeat this one. We get a shell. And a white worker. Would you need to kill three? Yes, I need to kill three barbarians or a building is pointless. I, I would auto lose. But building could give me spaces to, if I do build from here, uh, could get me the meeple I need to defeat another barbarian. So I have to think that way too. But then also, can I build one of these? No, I can't until I uncover this. So it's like I'm kind of stuck. Feels. I feel like I'm stuck. But maybe I'm just being a big chicken. Big old chicken. All right. So I definitely want a yellow from this one, I believe. I feel like that's that's what I want. And I need one more yellow, which I can make here, right? And then I provision yellow, yellow, blue. Defeat this one, which gives me a shell and a white meeple. Yeah, I might have to wait. But then again, I have more to defeat next turn. So they just keep coming.
Yeah, I can trade one white with a provision for any color. Any color, yep. Yep, yep, yep. But then I'm short on provisions, but I have shells to get provisions. I, I could put a worker here for a provision. I, if, ah, okay, hold on. To pay the barbarians, I need a white worker, two shells, a wood, and a red meeple? Okay. Hmm. This guy can destroy for a yellow and a white. I can get a black from here and then trade one of these for a yellow. I can go for this one. The rubber band between your ears is getting pretty tight. Yes, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> oh my god. This is cool, though. This is like, I'm, I'm having a good time for sure. Uh, all right, tossing this dude, smiley chicken guy. Sorry, buddy. I, I need the colored meeple. You got yellow. I need your yellow. Okay. Uh, let's go with. Oh, we can get a red here. Mm -hmm. Let's go with... Black? Oh yeah, we can toss her too. Okay, so what I'm thinking is, uh, well, I, I want to build, let me think here. So I need to save, what, what I need to build, I need to save things so I don't accidentally spend them and to visually see them. Uh, oh, uh, so that will build this if I want. Okay, hang off uh, the dummies. I only have this. I'm missing a red. So I have enough to buy a provision. Here. I could gain a provision. I also see the building of this is right here. Do I just do that? I'll get a meeple from this. Oh, four shells for a white meeple under there. Hmm. Hmm. I could turn this into two shells. Like, I need to be able to defeat one of these. Oh, you get a shell for defeating two and drawing a card if I defeat this one. Yeah, true. Okay. Two shells. Spend two shells for another provision. Trade white meeple and a provision. Or uh, yellow. Let's go two provisions. 
two provisions, yellow and black, defeat this one, gaining a shell and drawing a card. Hmm. Hmm. This is so, could be so stupid, but I'm going to do it. I, should, I don't know if I should wait one more round, but I'm going to do it right now. It's annoying me. Uh, so I'm going to build. I get a brick, a wood. I destroy two cards off here. Milk, ouch. <laughs> Okay, this goes back in the box. All right, now I'm going to draw one more Barbarian. Who knew? I have this trade. I have these spots to build now. Okay. So now, building. Oh, I'd love to build. I mean, I can, right? I can build a, a hut. Where do I build this? Ah! But this, building this? will let me be able to build this probably easier, right? But I don't have a worker to take care of this right now. I don't really have a worker to use with this. This will give me shells. Hmm. Hmm. Build and tuck. Yes, I like what you're thinking. The tuck. I almost forgot the tuck. Good thought. I love tuck. One tuck. One no tuck. All right. Build white meeple, three bricks, and a stick. Okay. Wh which one am I covering? I don't know if I need to decide that yet or if I read this first. I don't know the order, but. Or hut either one. You have one worker. Oh, yeah. I'll get a worker back from this. Duh. I will take. Probably a red, right? Because I see red. Oh, red's needed for this. Yeah, let's get a red. I don't know. Okay, I'll take a red. That unlocks this worker placement spot for trading. Oh, whoopee doo. A little provision. Fantastic. <laughs> At least it's not a story entry. I'll take it. Now what? Tuck. What do we want to tuck? Black worker or white worker? What do we want to produce? Probably white, right? We do need black here. We do need black here. But we also need white. White also what builds everything. White can be changed colors. Whites are expensive because they're worth four shells. I don't know. But the, I mean, we could draw more black. We're going to be drawing three cards now, so we'll, we'll have black meeples up there. Recruit Town Soak. Yeah, true. I still need to do that. But I, I didn't know what I want to do with this one, if I need the provision or not. I guess I don't, right? So I'm just going to put this here. But I was saving it to, like, not know what I was going to do with it exactly. But yeah, you're right. I should just, like, throw it in there. Oh, you decide this first officially? Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, because it makes sense. You have to move it off the card to, to get the card to flip it. So that, that's logical. It makes sense. Uh, I feel like I put white. We have the wood, the shells, and the red meeple. Wow, we've bought off the barbarians too. I did not think that would happen.
Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good. Uh, okay, uh, return to barge. Uh, what else? Suffer attacks. Two shells, uh, wood, and a red meeple. Uh, refresh card row. Uh, three cards. One, two, three. So we need to make space. Oh, man. Oh, man. We're like living on the edge here. Oh, there's the black meeples I was thinking were coming. They want my brick. Harvest four cards. One, two, three, four. Uh, white meeple. Provision. Uh, shell. No sheds or outposts. Okay, blue. Uh, brick, shell. White. White. Provision. And something of a color. What the hell am I doing here? Three barbarians, my ass. Let's, uh, I don't know. Red? Like red, just because we need red there? Yellow, yellow, blue. We can defeat that one if we just take yellow. Blue, red. Oh, okay, hold on. If I take red, we have red and blue. First one's defeated. Yellow, yellow, we need another red. Then the next ones, we need more yellows or something. I obviously need to uncover like the yellow barn here, which I am like one wood away, which I can slap a guy down here and maybe get. Oh no, right here I have a wood. Hmm, hmm. What's under here? Drawing a card. Interesting. No, I feel like we need to uncover something here. That is our next building. It's purple. Kill those that give cards first, maybe? Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. So this guy, if I kill this guy, I get a shell. So I need black. A red, a black. Yeah, I need to find one townsperson. Gotta have nine to kill the three. Oh, I see. Like, I need to have nine meeples minimum, right? And I only have two here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I do have a ninth one I haven't taken yet. Right? I don't think I've taken that one yet because I had a yellow left over. That was here, right? It's just which color? Like, where do, where do I start? I can get a blue from this one by tossing this one away. I can get extra by tossing this one away with the reds, two reds. Maybe that's the opening play is two reds and the blue to get rid of this one. Yeah, I didn't take it yet. I didn't take it yet. I'm still deciding. Like, I'm trying to think like which which color to break out which barbarian. Should I be trying for this one? Maybe, right? Yeah, maybe. If I can build, I can get a black from here. I can get a black from here. There's also going for the big shell play. 
to get lots of shells to trade for white to then trade them for this. Red or yellow, says David. Okay. Uh, red or yellow, says Makan. And then purple building for the other color. Okay. Okay. Let's go with yellow. Yellow. Okay. So with this, we could just spend one provision right now, right? Two yellow and hmm. Do I toss this for the double reds or just one red right now? Let's do double reds. Okay, so one provision, two yellow, and a red. Defeat this one. Gives us three shells. If I toss this one, I get a black. Mm, no, maybe I should build first to get the black. Let's let's build first, get the black maybe. This. Oh, I don't have the wood. I think I need to toss this one to get both. A black and a wood. Okay, let's build here, I think. I don't know what color to build though. White, Rick, three wood. To build one of these. Which meeple little exchange rate is good? Do I go for something I have trouble finding so that I can turn whites into that? Or do I go for something I'm like a blue that I'm making so that I can turn it into a white? Build black or red? Wow. Black or red? Yeah, right now, right? Short-sighted to like, just to look at what's in front of me. I need blacks and reds, right? So one of those makes sense. You take yellow, that will help you build the canal. Oh yeah, true. Damn. This is crazy. This is crazy. You need not to die this turn, I know. So yeah, I definitely need to think of these, right? And only that. Let's go black. Oh, uh, well, that, that gets us a black. Right, now blacks can be white and whites can be black. They count for the same thing, right? They're interchangeable. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, do I go for this guy with the two provisions? Yeah, right? I'll get a shell and a card draw. We have to shuffle anyway. So yeah, let's do it. Two provisions, two black and a red. Oh yeah, black plus provision is any other color. Oh, that's so bad. Maybe I shouldn't spend my blacks that easy. No, let's do it. Let's do it. Shell. Plus card draw. A red. Red and blue. 
Red and blue. Okay. Red and blue. Oh, red and blue. Spend, what do I need, a provision? Spend two shells for provision. And red, blue, blue. For this guy, he will get me two shells and a brick. Okay. Now what? Oh, did I do the wrong colors? Did I do the wrong colors? Oh, I did, probably, right? Yeah, I did, you put them in the wrong, I even put them in the wrong container. Sorry, it was red, red, blue, not blue, blue, red. So how do I fix that? I take back a blue. I need to make a red, right? Yeah, let's just pretend we did this. Red, turn them into a red, right? And then we got it, right? Is that okay? Yeah, that works, right? Use this space. Yeah, wow. My brain getting uh, mushy? Maybe. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. So canal, yellow, black, oh my gosh. Can I, I could defeat another barbarian, I think. Because can I not, um, I could toss this guy per, for provision and a brick, but I could trade for two provisions. And then, no, I don't have enough provisions. Never mind, I don't have enough provisions. No, nope. because even with this provision, two more, I still need for this one to get the colors. Yeah, I'm way off, even with this. Yeah, yeah, I'm way off. What was I thinking? I don't know. Cuckoo. All right, I think I just plop this here for provision. Oh yeah, blue here. I have a blue here. That's what it was. Oh, I have extra shells. Is that good? Should I do that? Hmm. 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 Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to do it. So I toss this guy for a blue. I think I can. That's what I, I forgot about that guy. That's what, I thought I could saw a way to do it. I think I have it. So I'm gonna trade this um, for uh, yellow. I'm gonna trade this for a provision. Trade this for a yellow. Trade these four for two provisions. Spend the two provisions plus these to defeat this one, gaining two shells. Oh yeah, I wasn't even looking what I need up there. Oops. Uh, but whatever. Yeah, maybe I should just... Uh, no, it's fine, it's fine. I did what I did. Okay. If I had a space to build in... I could toss this card to get enough shells to buy a white worker to then build this, but I don't have a space to build it on, so it's not happening, but that is okay. And this guy I'll just use for a brick, I think. This should lead to more townsfolk too to grab, right? Which could help, I think.
All right. Barge is already there. Uh, suffer attacks. So we'll get rid of a brick. And this one wants a blue meeple we don't have. Mm -hmm. Okay, attacks are done. Refresh the row. We're drawing three barbarians. Three barbarians. So we need to shuffle. Get another resource and worker from the hut. Oh, yeah, I could have. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, do the shells and then get that. Yeah. Yeah, because I could have put the worker there. Yeah, I probably should have did that. That was my bad. Instead of the brick, right? So we say that I toss this. Instead of gaining a brick to get two shells using this trade. Then with these four shells. A white worker from this one. Put this here. And then gain, what, a wood probably? Or a brick? It depends what I'm trying to do. Am I going purple here, or am I going green? Hmm, card draw is probably what the play is. I love these little huts, but also the colors for the barbarians. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah, hmm. Hmm. I feel like we'll take a wood. Okay, rows reset, harvest, uh, four cards. Oh no! Gotta move the water. Oh man. <laughs> the deck's getting small. Uh-oh. I think the water is gonna move next turn no matter what. Oh, I'm screwed. I am screwed. I killed too many townsfolk. Yeah, oh, if I just left one alive. And uh, didn't trash. <laughs> it's rush time. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a bad time for sure. Okay. Uh, this, this, this. Oh, cowrie shell. Yeah, yeah. Okay, blue. Uh, brick. Cowry shell, white meeple, white meeple, vision, any color, any color. Is this a building turn? It kind of has to be, right? Has to be. So it should be yellow. Yeah, I'm gonna take yellow. Just look like. Looking at this, if white equals black, I got this covered, but I don't know how I'm doing this. Oh yeah, and I get these back. I almost forgot those guys. Hmm. So I have to defeat, how many barbarians? Just two? Just two, right? That's doable. Two is nothing, I can do four, what's two? Two is nothing. All right. All right. I'm going to leave this for a second. I'm just going to take a quick uh, bio break. I'll be right back. Stay tuned.
Alright. Oh, yeah. We have enough to survive another round at least? Okay, good. I figured if I left it up on the screen, you guys would analyze it and, and decipher all, all the goodies. Because <laughs> me zoomed in right at the table here. I don't see it, but I haven't really looked. Oh my god. Okay. Huh. All right. Where to start? I, we should just build first, right? Oh. We gotta be careful. We, we could lose by running out of cards too, right? So I probably just want to get those in there. Because like these are going to destroy two cards. And we have to read story, which who knows how that's going to mess with us. I think, I think her milk and the meat. I have meat, but like I have fish. But I think this milk, like I don't know what's left in here. I should have looked at it before I finished shuffling. But I got to keep an eye on this, too. Mm. But I, I got to, I have to build this. I have to. Because I'm, I'm, sh I'm shuffling anyway, right? Right? If I draw four cards, I shuffle right away. Or I only shuffle when I need something. How does it work in this game again? Is it anytime it's empty right away? Probably, right? Can't be that easy. No, it says if you ever need to draw or destroy Townsfolk cards from your ready pile while it's empty, immediately shuffle it. Okay. Huh. Hmm. Because I could, I could survive another round, right? With four cards in here. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. If I don't build, I might not have to move the water, right? Just thinking options is probably not smart to do. Oh, man. All right, let's just build. Let's just do it. YOLO. Uh, white equal black, right? So I'll just do three white and a yellow. And then three of these shells. Smashy fish. Smashy rain. And then we're going to read 34, which I'm sure this goes into the history. Not all people can come and assist in this grand work. Defeating the floods will be a boon to us all, but life carries on in the small things as well as the large. Nearby villages do what they can to help, but, but they still must farm, forage, fight, and thrive. So it is with great pride in our people and deepest of honor that I accepted a gift today from a family from the nearby mountains. They see what we are doing and how it benefits all. They are grateful for the work, but they cannot see how grateful I am to them. So put it in the history, done. Find 37, put it in the huts and canals for future games, and gain two provisions. Was it 37? 37, yeah, 37. So it's a new like five or six card. Oh no, <laughs> that's lucky. What is this? Oh, 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 get cards directly to hand. From there, oh, hello. I mean, I wasn't even looking at these very closely. Huh. 
Huh. We also open up two more building spots that can get us meeples to help with this problem. All right. And we only have two, two cards in our deck. Oh, man. Okay. Well, you're going here. I just think that's how that's working. Okay, it is shuffle when you need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So yeah, you can like draw four and you're not like moving the water right away if you have an empty deck. Only if you need more cards. Yeah, I need him too, right? I just wasn't sure. But yeah, I probably should. Yeah, let's just do it. But I still need to defeat two of them. So I had to be careful with my provisions. So here, let me not take him yet. Let me not take him yet, just in case. Just in case I need the provisions. I haven't really like mathed anything out yet. So... Uh, which two am I trying to defeat here? It gives me shells. I guess I should be looking at the... Oh, they need meeples. Oh, man. So there's black. Black's in blue, but that's like three provisions. So expensive. That'll get me a meeple. I can get a red right here. Red. I can get a blue here. Don't really need. Oh, yeah, I got to destroy two here. Oh, man, yeah. What do I do? What do I do? Ah! I can get more people this way, too, right? But, like, I need this. Damn. This is crazy. This is crazy. Red, red, yellow. I want these shells. Black, black, yellow. I'm short of yellow. Could do blue. Can I build something here to increase flexibility? Yeah, I need that. Wood, wood, brick. I need another wood. I need another wood. Does any of these give me wood? No, all brick. If I build this, oh, I can get a wood here. So many options, holy crap. Okay, too many options. All right, I'm losing my mind. Uh, what are you guys saying? Swap blue into yellow? Swap blue into yellow. Gets me what? Black, black, yellow? I'm thinking of building this because I have so much brick. But I could build this for with one more wood, which I can get right here. Oh my god. You can get, so Makan says, you can get a wood from the hut space. To convert, uh, where was it? You can get a wood from the hut space, build up, and build a purple, or reds, or yellows. And I could slap, I could do yellow and slap that on right there and get a yellow, which is now yellow, black, or whatever. Hmm. This is crazy. Building a purple sounds good, plus you get a yellow from placing it. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking, but which color do I start that whole process with? That's the question.
I mean, it has to be white for the building, right? So let's just do that. But here, what do I put on here? Probably something that's not needed as much. A blue? A blue? Yeah, only one blue for the barbarians, right? Yeah, okay. A blue to get a wood. Three wood and a brick. Plus a white meeple, which could be black, but it's going to be white. Uncover yellow. Purple on reds. Free yellow from building. It kills the cheapest barbarian. Holy crap. Purple on reds. So pur purple from this one for red. Free yellow from building. Yellow from building. Kills the cheapest barbarian. Because now white, red, and black are all the same. This is what you're saying. I get it. Okay. Wow. Wow. And provision. Provision. Red, red, yellow, right? Red. You see this game getting smoother the more times you play it? But right now I'm like, holy... I'm in the matrix of color conversions here. This is melting my brain. Trade this for this to get these. That's equal to this. But I also need this. But save for these. And that will stop me from needing this color. But this color is actually equal to this color and this color. <laughs> okay. Three shells. <laughs> that's, how it be. that's how I feel right now. It's like, holy. This game is deceivingly simple. But man. I don't play a ton of these like Gero kind of like resource conversion and management games. I need to play more, obviously. But uh, yeah, this is definitely getting nuts. I like it though. <gasps> okay. Just take it slow. We'll be fine. <laughs> All right. Okay. One more barbarian defeating. Uh, we need to defeat, right? So. We don't have a lot of meeples for such things because we're going to draw three barbarians and that will fill it all up. So how do we defeat another barbarian? That's the question. I can get another blue. I can toss for a white, but that's like all super scary. This guy, I could toss for a white. I technically just need like three white and this is gone. Hmm. Barbarian discard on right, not left. Oh, whoops. Uh, my bad, my bad. Thank you, thank you. I, my mistake. I told you I'm losing my brain. I'm falling apart over here. Thank you. <laughs> you can defeat a barbarian by trashing the white in your hand. And on top. But I don't know. Trashing so many cards is risky, right? What about this? Should I be doing this to draw from here? Because then maybe I see something that's a little more efficient. But it's unknown because it comes off the deck blind. But it does add another card to my uh, little, little problem here. Or use the blue from the card to swap into black. Blue from the card, swap it into black. Trash one white to act as a black. That would be this guy who I can afford, which does give me a white, which I then can place here. And I'll have for next round. Yeah, let's do the cleaner way with like less card trashing, I think. Two blue, and blue into black. 
Uh, toss this guy. White. Now, technically, I have white, red, black, black. Three provisions. I mean, this expensive guy to get rid of, I think. But might be okay. Cowrie shell. White. Destroyed. Spend provision for tossing a white. No, but isn't the white equal to another color? I don't I don't need to spend this to turn them into black, right? Like isn't a white a black? So this guy, I did a white which equals black, right? You trash from the top. Oh, from this. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That costs me a provision. Yeah, yeah, sorry guys. I see what you're saying, I see what you're saying. So then instead, let's do like this. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I forgot about this provision. I forgot about the provision. I could toss this guy instead, right? And that would be that guy. So then, because like, I think I want that guy in my deck instead for provision. No, I don't even need to do that right now. I do this for provision, spend provision for this. Now you owe yourself a brick. Right here. Gain brick. From the town soak you trashed. Oh yeah, top card, top card, sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, the top part, the top part. Okay. Yeah, because like I'm eyeballing this too for here, right? Like I want that. So you might need to draw cards, that would make sense. This guy, do I just take the brick, call it a day? Or just two shells, probably two shells, right? I really would have loved to do this, but I don't have two provisions. I also am totally ignoring this up here. So I could get a white worker just to please this one. Because then I'm going to destroy two cards. Oh no. Oh no, I have enough. I have enough. But yeah, that's rough. Oh, I do have enough for this. I do have enough for this. For some reason, I thought I didn't. I thought it was too much. But it is only six. Yeah, two, two, and two. It's either do that, and I have an extra card, or I trade for a white worker to just prevent one card from getting destroyed. And I'm still left with two shells. Your suggestion is bait. <laughs> Don't forget extra condition for winning. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do that either. Mm. Yeah, I don't know how I'm doing that at all. Because, like, I'll need to destroy two cards here, survive through all the barbarians. I, I don't have it. I don't have it. 
I don't think it's possible, but again, I don't know. Part of me does want to YOLO for the card or just take that. I think I just take that. Four shells. Or a white worker. Let's return the barge. Take our attacks. I don't have a blue. I don't have a yellow. Yeah, now I have no fish. I have no fish for this. Damn. And then a white worker. You add the card trashing even so. Okay. Uh, return the barge, dealt with attacks, refresh the row. So we need three cards. Yeah, because we're going to have to draw four Barbarians. So I need to have... I need to defeat four. <laughs> oh, no. Not happening. Okay. Harvest. Uh, we're shuffling. <laughs> Yeah, David, I know. People are saying I was going to lose the first couple of games for sure. So I'm okay with that. I'm surprised we're still going. I thought for sure a few times I, I screwed up and, and I made it so we're going to lose. One, two, three, four. Okay. White meatball. Shell. Revision. Two more shells. Uh, blue meatball. Brick, shell, white meatball, white meatball, provision, take these meatballs, I don't know, black, for this one. So 100% this is moving forward, so I have to defeat this. I have to build this. I have to build, okay? But then building right now destroys two cards, which I don't have, and I lose. Okay? I can't win anyway by building this unless I survive four more of these guys. So to survive the destruction, I could just put this guy here, right? Because then two cards can get destroyed. I don't have a fish to even satisfy this, so that's lost. Unless I YOLO off the top of the deck, but that's expensive. Yeah, I basically just completely ignore that, but I can't win anyway, so without doing that. And half doing it equals the same as not doing it at all, so. I do get to read a story though when I do this one. But is that dumb? Because it probably adds a harder card to make the next game harder. So I probably shouldn't do that on purpose. Hmm. Just go for the story from the canal and just call it on that. Yeah, true. I'm wondering if there is a way I could do this. Just the YOLO off the top, right? Because there was no fish here, right? Yeah. Oh, she's milk. I need to draw her, too. I need to draw her. That was the problem, too. Yeah. I, I, I need to even start it with that. So fish doesn't matter unless I can get this drawn. Hmm. Which I can draw from this. But then I still don't have enough to destroy. But I could if I start playing cards. Hmm. This is interesting. So to build this, I need a red and a yellow. I have red. I needed yellow, actually, right? So should I have just taken a yellow if I'm just going for the building? So three white and a yellow. Hold on. And three shells. 
does the uh, canal. Hold on. So that's canal, but I can't do it yet because it'll destroy this card I need. I'm going to try to see, can I, can I do this? Only if this is a fish. I can spend these two in YOLO draw, but that's crazy, right? Well, you could draw a card by killing barbarians for milk. Yeah, that's what I think I need to do. So can I do that with what I have here? So here's my two options. Both need two provisions. Oh, the draw too, yeah. I have these meeples. I should probably put some of these in here so they don't get, they, when they get destroyed. Okay, so, I mean, these red and white, these lead to multicolored ones, so they're good, right? So I need two provisions. Which one? Who's good? They're both the same reward, right? But I still need to survive. I have brick to give to this guy. This one's a problem. So let's pretend... Nope, I don't have the yellows. That was a problem. So I spent two provisions. It has to be this guy, right? Two provisions. Black, black, red. Yeah, yeah. It would be funny if it does work out. Uh, okay, so I take a shell. Whoops. Take a shell. And a card drop. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> Should we see? Uh, okay, hold on. Uh... I probably get rid of this guy, right? For the provision. I don't know if that's too risky, probably, right? Uh, two shells, provision. Two provisions and two shells for the fish. YOLO. Not a fish. <laughs> Not the fish. Damn it. <laughs> uh, okay. I hate this thing. I hate this. This like ruined everything. It's too random. And if I was locking cards under there through the game, which I should have been doing, I would have had much more trouble doing other things. Uh, okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, green hut for a story card. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's true. So I put this guy here for a wood? Yeah, I guess we tried to just do as much as we can, right? And this guy for a white worker? So we have white worker, three brick, and the stick to build gets us a blue. Oh, story number one. Okay, it's something. Uh, I'm not sure, Val. I haven't played that game in a while. Uh, I still have another campaign to play in that one. So yeah, I don't know. We'll probably play that game again later this year. And we can maybe talk about it then. Uh, but yeah, I can't remember off the top of my head right now to start thinking about that game. I'm like deep in this game right now. So I can't really do that. Sorry. All right, let's go to the skin. The promised workers arrived this morning. Among them was a young man, skilled and honorable in his trade. He has settled into the camp and will be valuable in the work ahead. So put that under history, 10 card, and oh, find card 10 and add it to your hand. Okay. Yeah, Val, I, I would probably ask that question like the, uh, in like the BGG forums or a Facebook group or something related to that game. You'll get like more of the hive mind uh, answers on that for sure. But yeah, I don't know. That's, I haven't really thought about the game in a while. Okay, sorry. What the number was? 
10, card 10. Oh, look at this guy. Poor girl. Or, or I don't know. I, I'm mesmerized by what's, what's in their hand. That's what I want to know. I want it. Oh, look at this little, uh, throw it away for any, any meeple you want. Mm hmm. Is it the card that's going to get us the game? I don't think so. Oh, but now we got another card draw here. Not the fish. Imagine this guy had a fish. Holy. Oh, is it Jade? Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that makes sense. Or a squished apple. No, it looks like a rock. It looks like rock, I think. <laughs> okay. Do I just destroy this now? Oh! Guys, I maybe should not have built that first and uncovered this. What I should have done is built this first and uncover that because I could maybe YOLO the fish. I forgot this was under here. A card draw. Could I, uh, could I roll that one back? I just don't get, what was it, the blue meeple? Cause, yeah, we could pretend I don't have this yet, right? And we just say I did this first? Cause I still have the cards here to destroy. So I think I'm okay for that. So if I go red, red, yellow, three shells. Yeah, yeah, I didn't see that there, but I wanna do it. Yeah, I don't care about this blue meeple. Yeah, if we're going YOLO, that's what we're doing. So I build here, and we'll just pretend we never read that stuff. So destroy, destroy. Yeah, I, I, I brain farted. I, was, I didn't realize that there was another YOLO draw under there. Let's do that. Okay, destroy, destroy. <laughs> oh no! Okay, now we need to go to story entry five. In all that I have to deal with in this grand task, I never thought that I would be, uh, would be flooding homes myself. Ooh, earlier this morning, we released water into a canal we had been digging. It is a sight to see. The water being sent on a course that we intended, a beast tamed. It, was, it has happened many times now, and every time it brings me joy and a new sense of hope that we can achieve what my father could not. This morning, however, brought not only the divine sense of accomplishment, but also a man. A hermit, from the look of him. It seems that in the course of diverting the flood, waters we have sent the river into his home and destroyed it. Ouch. Thankfully, he was not at home at the time and is thus able to stand before us. But he is a fall. He is, but he is failing to see the benefit of this without a home to go back to. Perhaps I will talk to him about joining our camp. The tools he carries look well used, and I'm sure his strength could be better used than berating poor Bo Yi. So put that under the history. Find card four in the story deck and put it under huts and canals for future games. Four in the story deck, huts and canals, future games. Okay. Find card five in the story deck, place it face up in your exhausted pile. Hmm. Oh, that's cool. It's actually a dude. He gets added to our game. And then that will mean he'll go into that deck, right? For future games. Oh, it's a fish! How do we do this? Can I draw more? How do we get the fish? <laughs> Why is he not added to my hand? Come on. Has to be a typo, right? Is there an errata? Official errata? Okay, so when we build this... This goes here, YOLO draw, right? Not a fish, damn it. 
Okay, so that goes there. We read the other story. All they get this guy. Okay, all that's good. <laughs> okay. An official errata. <laughs> Very nice, minion. Very nice. <laughs> oh no. Okay, we could draw one for here. Ah, oh, we need this guy. How do we do this? How do we make this happen? Can I defeat one more barbarian to draw? I can guess any color meeple by tossing this guy. This has to be doable. There has to be a way. Yeah, I have enough meeples here. I have to be able to get yellow, yellow, black. Uh, so I need any color meeple yellow. I, a white is a black. Oh, but I have to be careful. I need the milk and a meat. I'm fine. It's the fish. I need two draws. So yellow. I don't have a provision. Oh, she can get me provisions. I need three provisions. Yes. Here, I'm going to try this. This might be super stupid and might not work. You cannot get him. Blood is on the last spot. Oh, no, I can move the flood one more, right? I don't care about winning. I can't win, right? Because the barbarians, I can't survive the barbarians. Oh, I didn't move the flood last time. Oh, I'm what? But I just built this. When you got the old man, you didn't move the flood. Oh, I did. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. I, I see what you're saying. I forgot. Okay. I forgot. I forgot. Okay. I see. So the flood's here. Okay. Oops. That changes things. Hmm. So as soon as this goes off, instant loss. So that I, I can't. Yeah, I see. I see. Damn. Okay. <laughs> Damn it. Anything else we could do? I mean, I guess we can just draw. That doesn't cause trouble, right? But can any of this lead to any more story entries? No, right? There's no story barbarians. I can't build this hut because all my build spots are full. Is there a reason? So don't spoil it. But, or maybe I shouldn't even ask the question. I was going to say, if I lose... How am I losing right now? I'm losing. Like, what is technically my loss condition? It would be when I go to do the barbarians, right? They would rip through my deck, probably. One, two, three, four, five. I mean, I could have enough cards in there. But then if I go to fill the row, barbarians fill up. Yeah, I don't know. We have one, oh, I do have one spot left. Yeah, I don't think I, maybe I can get the resources, right? Yeah, let's try that. Let's just do that then. Okay, so we need, I guess, a white meeple. We need one more brick. Hmm, I don't have the shells for the brick. Yeah, I can't. No brick. I have no brick. Uh, could I get a bunch of shells some other way? No. No, I don't think I can. Maybe. Last trade is wood or brick for shells, but I don't... Like, I could get three wood right here. Maybe you're saying... Three wood. Let's just see what we get, right? From trading all our cards in, maybe.
And then I still need one of the wood. Oh, I can get shells by just tossing cards. Uh, let's trade a wood for a shell. Three shells for a brick. And we got it, right? Boom, boom, boom. Uh, this goes here. It's blue. Flip this. Yeah, man, that's like a puzzle. 11. All right, we're reading another entry. That's a lot of reading. The first one, I didn't expect to see so many secret little entries in the first game. While waking, or sorry, while walking among the workers today, I spoke with a forester who had the most wonderful ideas about the ways we are using the trees we fell as we dig. This will surely make our work easier as we move down river. So the hut goes into history and find 40 and put it in hunts and canals for future games. 40. Huts and canals. Oh, two shells. Okay, sure, whatever. <laughs> whatever. All right. I don't know what to say. What do we need to feed these idiots? Shells, twig, meeple. Provisions. I, I don't know. Whatever. I'm just going to do this. I don't think it matters. Okay, I'll put this guy here for a provision. Whatever. Sure. Done? Done. I just want to be done. All right. Blue meeple. Take it and go. Oh, sorry. We see the last townsfolk card. See what the last townsfolk card would have been? Use two shells for card draw? What are you saying? Oh, right here? You want a YOLO again? So before throwing this one away for the extra shell, and this one away for the extra provision, but I still don't have the milk. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Uh, no, we still need that provision. Or we need this guy for a provision. Which leads to this for a card draw. Oh, there's the milk, but not the fish. <laughs> and whatever. Okay, whatever, whatever, whatever. All right. Uh, spend, spend, spend. Whatever. Wood. We already lost the blue provision. I messed this all up. Whatever. So blue goes away to this guy. Yellow, we take a hit. And when, oh, when this shuffles, this moves. And we lose for that. That makes sense, right? All right. This shuffles off. That's how we lose, right? The water? You lose there to the flood. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. I was trying to like, trying to think. I couldn't get there to understand how I was going to lose. Like, for some reason, I thought they destroy all the cards. But that's not true, because as soon as they destroy the cards, the deck shuffles. And I was having trouble. For some reason, my mind is still stuck that I, I had another, another chance there. But I messed up on that. All right, so Flood did it. So let's draw our loser card. Yay! So we don't get to draw from the winner cards. Maybe one day. Stay tuned. Okay, we draw our first loser card from the loser pile. And then we check the back of it. Is it from the water? Or did we lose from barbarians overrunning us? Or them, our deck getting destroyed? We lost for this, so we read entry 10. Right? Storybook 10. This is fun, though. This is definitely a fun game. Stressful, but fun. Sweetest Tushani Tushanshi? Sweetest Tushanshi. 
Ushanshi. This world is a strange and wonderful thing as I sit here and wait once more for the floods to pass so I can send out my workers to fight this seemingly insurmountable battle of holding back the water beast that is devouring this land. I cannot help but be overcome by the wonder of it all. An emissary arrived today from the capital. It seems that the emperor has been making new friends. The messenger brought word of hardy northern folk with a taste for fish. That's the theme of today, the fish. It seems that if I keep them fed, they will fight for us. They are known to be quite proficient in battle. They are to arrive in the new season, so I will have to think of how to best to acquire more fish. The message oddly spoke of watching for them coming up the river. File the revealed defeat card in uh, the box under history. Janet, thank you for the super chat. Says to buy more shovels for building canals. Hey, what are you trying to say? You're trying to say my canal building isn't up to par? <laughs> thank you for the super chat, Janet. I appreciate the support. <laughs> Actually, if you could provide some more weapons, uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to reroute those funds into buying weapons to deal with barbarians. That's really what I need. Stupid barbarians. Get them off my back. All right. Find card 55 in the story deck. File it in the box under other setup cards. This is a skill card. Oh, so they're saying my skills suck. So they're giving me skill cards. I see. <laughs> yep. Yep. I, I'll take it. I'll take it. 55 skill card. It was a skill issue. So, oh, that's not 55. That's 65. Oops. Oopsie. Spoilers. Is that a six? Looks like a five. 55. 50. Okay, come on. Fifty. Oh yeah, came from story ten. That makes sense. That makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Um. Hmm. Hmm. What the? F what the f <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Let's see what else it says. For all future games, place this skill card face up alongside the board it has an ongoing ability that may, you may use multiple times at any point during each game to use this ability you must place a townsfolk card from your hand to your exhausted pile that features the fish icon okay okay i get it i don't have enough fish i get it all right i didn't my fish game sucks all right we learned that i couldn't even pull a fish card all right i was willy-nilly with my fish game all right uh it features a fish icon to my exhausted pile. Immediately gain one laborer, so a white worker, and two shells after doing so. So exhaust the card with the fish to get the goodies. At least you don't lose the card. That's cool. So we're going to put that in other setup cards. Other setup. <laughs> uh, yeah, Val, I don't know. Probably around that time, though. That would make sense. But here's the problem. Uh, we're going to play that with Kyle. And Kyle can't come every week, we've learned. Uh, he'll come when he can. And we're also in the middle of playing a campaign game. We're not sure when that's going to end or when we just want to stop playing it because it's unknown how long it will take us to play it. Plus, we, so we don't know how often Kyle will come every week, so that's not consistent. Then we don't know how long we're going to play the game we're playing, so that's unknown. And we might want to play other games instead after that game, or take breaks to play other games. So I don't know. That one's really up in the air, Val. I have no idea, man. You're just the best way to subscribe, turn on notifications, and keep swiping those notifications away for the games you don't care about that we're streaming. Because once we do schedule that game, or at least just subscribe, so it'll show up in your subscription feeds. But that's the best way to know. But I can't predict the future. There is way too many unknowns between now and then. Especially games that are still coming. Kickstarters that could show up. Games from Gen Con we could come back with. I know there's publishers already reaching out that are sending us. Uh, uh, there's the Kickstarter preview we have coming in August. 
I have no idea. I don't even know when the Rings of Power Season 2 is coming. I'm not sure. But it would make sense to play it around that time because I'll get all in the Lord of the Rings mood. But we also have Lord of the Rings LCG we can play at that time. And other Lord of the Rings games we have that we've not streamed before. Uh, plus other ones that are coming down the pipe too. New games coming out with the Lord of the Rings IP. Yeah, so much. That's so unknown. I'm so, Oh, it's late 2024? Uh, we'll probably play it before then, but... Yeah, that's far. Wow. But I do appreciate your enthusiasm for, the, for that series. We will get back to and playing that for sure. We do have that one campaign to play still. I'm kind of excited for it. But uh, again, there's so much up in the air, I'm not sure. David, I, I don't know. I didn't back any Shadows of Brimstone stuff. But we do have Shadows of Brimstone in like the giant pile of games that could potentially be streamed at some point. I think Mel has half of it painted. And we just have like the base set for it. Just to try it out. We bought it like a year or two ago. But uh, it's just we haven't got to it yet. Other games keep coming in that bump it in priority and stuff. So yeah, lots of lots. Of, oh man, so many games. So many games. And then you guys keep coming in here yelling at me with different games I need to focus on and play. So it's like, ah, there's too much. Too many great games, which is a great problem to have, by the way. <laughs> no shortage of content to be able to be played with here. Okay, so we've put that in there, and that's it, right? Is that just the end of it? Yeah. There's no other end of game shenanigans, right? Between games, to store your progress between games, be sure to file cards in their correct sections, which I'm going to do on video so I don't mess that up right now with you guys watching. Uh, various cards, story deck, okay. No workers and resources are carried over between games. Any remaining townsfolk cards in your hand or ready exhaust piles are shuffled back together with all the townsfolk cards. Uh, okay, so we should, let's see, let's see how this goes. Okay, so we could just throw these all, I just want to show this, it's kind of neat. I like the organization of this very much. It's just like great for setup and teardown. Doesn't take up a lot of table space. Great for solo play. I, I love it. I love it. I love it. Oh, boom. We put all our workers here. Our little boat there. Some wood in here, for example. I'll, I'll just put lids on these things, though. But you get the point, right? Uh, we're going to put these carefully back in here. We're going to keep the loser one on top so it's more accessible uh, for next time. <laughs> uh... Where are you? This is all the history. Victory and defeat cards in here. Oops. Uh, barbarians. Okay. Where's the barbarians? In here. Okay. Townsfolk. In here. Obviously, they put space in here for sleeving because my cards are falling all over the place, but maybe not. I don't know. Council cards from here. This is the other setup, probably, right? Other setup cards. Uh, what about this? Oh, all our huts and canals are already back. Oh, genius. We like pre cleaned up. There's the board. There's the rule book, storybook. So, this stuff, I'm just going to put these here. I'm just going to snap a lid because we'll continue this. Probably Friday. I think Friday I'll stream this game. And we'll continue. I was thinking of doing it tomorrow, but I have other stuff I have to do. I don't, I don't know. I was going to, if I could play this, if I could play the next one in under two hours, I could do it tomorrow. But I don't want to be rushed playing this game. I really enjoyed playing it at like a careful pace, you know, at waiting for chat to catch up, you know, and just playing together. I think it's fun. It's not something I want to rush through. I'll probably only play it once, right? So, um... But yeah, you could speed this game in an hour for sure if you're just quick, quick and dirty with your resources. But it does, it can be prone to analysis paralysis, thinking of all the paths where you can sw switch resources for other resources, which if you like that crunchy stuff, I, I think it's great. And we haven't even finished adding more rules and stuff to the game, not even close. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. Uh, so yeah, we'll just throw this in here. Yeah, I'll just leave all those in there for now. I'll just put this here. And that's it. And then I'll just snap some lids on these so they don't 
fall over the floor when I move them to my game campaign games in progress shelving I have off to the side here. <laughs> what is this? What is this? We made it through. We made it through. It wasn't seven and a half hours. I appreciate the help, everybody. I appreciate all of you throwing out suggestions. Uh, I do know from sitting, watching streams on my couch on a big screen, watching board game streams and stuff, even my own streams, I can see things like that bird's eye view. You guys have that advantage and I love it. But when I'm like hunched over the game, I'm like trying to see everything. It's, it's tough sometimes when you're like, you guys know when you're playing games and you're like hunched over, like zoomed in and trying to like solve the puzzle. It's definitely a challenge. So I love having you guys cheating uh, by sitting on my shoulders, looking from the bird's eye view and helping out. Uh, just don't tell anyone that we're playing a solo only game with like, you know, uh, with like 30 players. Shh, don't tell anyone, okay? We're definitely cheating, but we still lost. So I, I don't know what that says, but <laughs> they obviously built the game knowing we might do that because they were ready for us. Also, I'm not going to eat fish or think about fish for a few days because it is my new trigger word. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, what are you guys saying? Let's see here. David says, I really enjoyed my campaign. Hope to hit it again in six months or a year. Yeah, and you kind of like forget some stuff and whatever. Yeah, that's good. Janet wants to know the thoughts. Uh, really clever game. It definitely like, I feel like every Garfield game or whatever it's called, Shem Phillips game, these kind of games, Bobby Hill, whatever the game we played yesterday, all the games are in this size box, you know. They all have this similar DNA, right? They're all like resource management, but they throw in like a mechanic or two to switch it up. Uh, but I, I like the quality of it. I've never played a bad game that came out of one of these boxes. They just sometimes are a little too similar. And I don't want a collection full of all the same game, you know, like the same experience kind of feeling. But a solo only campaign, I can't say that about the other ones. Uh, I don't have many solo campaign games, right? There is a campaign of Final Girl I want to do with one of those little um, those little story ones that make a little campaign. I want to try that one time. Um, but yeah, we were even talking about the campaign yesterday for like Hadrian's Wall, the solo campaign. I know there's one for like Lost Runes Arnak that uh, somebody was telling me about that I should probably try sometime. But uh, yeah, I like it. I like these little puzzly Euro-y engine building ones. I like how it's solo. And it's solo without like an AI deck. It's not like a multiplayer Euro game that tacks on a solo booklet of rules or a couple pages of rules or an AI deck or whatever to kind of simulate playing with another player. It's like, I'm just playing in my own world, resource managing, but it doesn't feel like those like lame tacked on solo modes. Like it's like just a true solo game. And I appreciate it very much. It's a very well designed, very, very well done little game. Uh, and again, I've only scratched the surface and it blows my mind to think I might only see like 40 to 60% of the content. Uh, it's crazy. It blew my mind how many story entries we actually read in a playthrough. I was not expecting that. I was expecting the first playthrough to maybe read that book like three times. Like, because I didn't look at anything in the box. So I had no idea how many possible story things could show up. I had no idea the barbarians had story stuff on them until we put them out on the board. And then flipping over the huts, I didn't think like there was going to be so many that had story on them. The canals. Yeah, it's very cool. And, and, and it's got that like a uh, little dopamine hit that I get from playing so many campaign games on the channel or legacy games where you like opening a box, even though we're just pulling a card out of a deck, you know, similar to like Aeon's End or whatever. Um, we're also, or Aeon's End Legacy, I should say, or, or whatever. Those legacy games that just add more cards, like don't really, some spice it up a lot some spice it up a little but just the fact that they're only adding in cards even though it's just that little bit the fact i got some new town folk in the deck there's some new setup cards to see next time that little hit of discovery and and change has me wanting to play again right now obviously my brain's a little fried so i'm not going to because that'll be torture for you guys but uh i want to see where it goes i now want to know how do those new town folk in my deck help what are the new hut cards going to do What's going to happen in the canals? What other things am I going to see? And what stories are they going to bring? Like, are there any other barbarians that I'm going to be able to fight and, and evolve and whatever, right? That, that was fun taking out a barbarian who, like, didn't fully die. Didn't expect that was going to be in the design space at all. So even just those cute little tiny changes and tweaks, 
it still has that addictive nature that you get from like a bigger legacy campaign game of like you play, you level up, you open a box, you add some new cards to your pool. Like it, it, it still has all that stuff I love about legacy campaign games. The story, not too much story, but still cool. It's still a cool story, it's still a cool environment. It's just enough story. I don't mind breaking up the pace of play either. I'm sure that will annoy some people how they just want to play their damn Euro game and do through their puzzle, get done in an hour, but then they keep getting thrown back into the storybook to step away, read, change some things up. Now they have to rethink everything. But I like that. It keeps it interesting and not boring and the same thing. I can see how that can lead to future playthroughs. It's keeping the game interesting because my fear is how is that little story deck of cards and that tiny storybook going to make me okay playing this in game eight, game nine, game 10, if I'm like losing a few, right? I'm going to have to play it like 10 times if I lose three games to even win. Or even if I win a couple, but I end up losing out, I'm still going to play like 10 plus games probably. But am I going to want to play 10 games of this? Because just reading the rule book and looking at the game on the table, I'll be honest, I, and seeing it's only a story deck of cards and a little booklet, how is it going to be that interesting as it moves on? But they already have shown me that the little tweaks and the little story and the changing and the surprises is going to keep me wanting to play so far. And it's very clever how they've done it. So hopefully, game nine, I'm still as excited and still want to keep playing and still be interesting. That's my fear still, and I can't answer that. I don't know that. Uh, but I want to play to find out. So right now, I'm still wanting to play a bunch more games of this to see where it goes. But I have learned I probably won't be able to play two in the same session, especially while I'm also playing and streaming and learning other games on and off stream. Um, I'll probably only play this a couple times a week. I can't play it all in the same episode. I thought maybe because the game was only like an hour to play and it seemed pretty simple, the rule book's simple. Um, I thought I'd be able to play like two in a sitting but still I'm not fully recovered. I still have like kind of brain fog happening every day. Um, and I still don't, you can probably hear that I'm not fully up to snuff, but um, I'll probably just relax and play it like one, one per stream kind of thing, but I'm definitely eager to keep playing. So yeah, I'll probably schedule after this is done, I'll probably schedule one for Friday afternoon and we'll play another session, then maybe a couple next week, you know, and keep it going like that and see until we get bored or until we, we get the idea or we just have to move on or want to move on to other games. But thank you, Janet, for the recommendation. Much appreciated. And everyone else who said it was a cool game um, or was interesting. Uh, AR or Grumpy Monkey says, great playthrough, Rob. Just curious if you'll ever have a stream of your game collection slash game room set up. Probably not. I don't think so. Because that would involve me actually sorting all my games out better and making them presentable. And uh, they're everywhere. And I have to move things around to get to some games and stuff. Like behind me, there's a wall of games. Uh, in another side room where I have equipment is games. On a shelf beside me are games in progress. Uh, straight behind you on the cameras, all my LCGs and stuff. Uh, there's a closet in my office next room where I do my editing and stuff. There's a closet full of more LCGs and card games and stuff. Uh, upstairs are games I'm currently like learning. I want to stare at me to remind me they need to be played. Games that come in and they're delivered before they're boxed and sorted and stuff are all upstairs on my other practice game table and on an extra shelving unit up there. Uh, so yeah, I'd have to definitely clean up things and organize things before I ever do a tour. But it, would, it changes so much. It's like, I don't know if I want to spend the work on that. And I feel like it wouldn't really get the views that it's worth the trouble to mess up all my stream setup and my organization, everything, just to do that. Um, so yeah, probably not. Just not the type of content I really want to do. So it's like, it would feel forced and I don't really want to do it. But uh, to be honest. So yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, but yeah. Minion number Q says, it's not like true solo players don't cheat anyway. I certainly fudge rules when I'm playing by myself. <laughs> yeah, that's the trouble. When I'm on stream, everyone's got me on the rules. They're like, nope, don't do that. Oh, you did that wrong. But it's like, I always say that too. When people leave comments, how like, oh, YouTubers, you all make mistakes. There's never, you never have a perfect playthrough. And I've always said that there is no perfect playthrough. I've learned that from doing this for like 10 years. Uh, but I've also learned, 
you make mistakes in almost every playthrough you play. So those that leave comments like that, I'm like, go film yourself playing this same game. Go film yourself playing a bunch. And then also try to deal with chat at the same time. So, so like have somebody on a video call you're also talking with like the whole time and see if you make any mistakes. Record it and watch it back later. I promise you, you'll make mistakes too. <laughs> or also try to play four games in the same week and, and keep them all straight. <laughs> see if that works. <laughs> I'm not here to get perfect rules. I stopped trying to achieve that, but I do appreciate the help for sure. And if I make mistakes, I help someone else learn uh, it, from you guys pointing mistakes out in the comments and stuff too. That helps other people who tune into the videos. And like I do sometimes, I tune into other people's streams. Sometimes I'm learning a game and I see all these mistakes all listed in the comments. And some of them I wouldn't have noticed if I didn't see them pointed out. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> Will that old fella bring along some fish at a timely moment? Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Uh, but yeah. Well, let's see. Backseat rolling riders. Oh, somebody asked earlier uh, to compare. What was the other thing? Uh, there's something about Hadrian's Wall. Where was it? I don't know, someone's asking to compare this versus Hadrian's Wall. Uh, I like this better so far. I just prefer this type of game, I think. They're similar though. There is a lot more similarities, I feel, than differences if you think about it. Especially if you add in that campaign, right? Although that campaign doesn't really like touch this campaign. Like there's not the same like altering of... <laughs> changing up things too crazy but technically this doesn't change things up too crazy either that that campaign is also changing setup and rules slightly um hadrian's wall is definitely a quicker game to pick up play clean up put away and all that stuff but they're both they definitely both scratch a similar itch and they're both like reasonably priced games too, so it's not hard to be like, you can play one and then buy the other. But if I had to only choose one, so far I'd probably choose this one, because it it's more, has more things in it that I like in games, right? It seems like the interesting campaign, story, I like the little Euro uh, resource management in this one. Just roll and writes, you know, the pencil, if you know, the physical, I like moving around bits in this game meeples and stuff more than just scratching off boxes on a sheet but it's still addictive though i don't know they're both very clever both very cool little games uh but yeah i think i would pick this one based on one play and the other one of three plays but who knows <laughs> they're both good though i don't have to choose i don't have to choose that's the beauty i would buy both deal with it i don't like to make choices like that Hence why I don't do top 10 lists or top 5 lists ever, because I don't like choosing. I don't like telling my children which one I like more. I just like getting more children. Does that make sense? No, probably not. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Tyler says, just found your channel. Look forward to following you play games. Oh, God. Uh, uh, just watch the... Cora Quest video and going to buy that game because of your playthrough. Oh no. Hey, you can't blame me. If you don't like it, uh, you have to contact my lawyers. I'm not responsible for you buying or not buying any games based on my playthroughs. <laughs> oh, welcome, Tyler. Welcome to the channel. That's awesome. Uh, be careful though. If you watched only one playthrough and you already wanted to buy a game, stay out of the playlist section or the previous live stream section or the video section. Do not go into those sections of my channel. There is like 10 years of content in there. Avoid it all. Avoid it all. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> no, you're not really disruptive. You know what I mean. It's just trying to stay focused on chat while keeping a game straight, while making sure the stream's up, while like trying to... Trying to keep information flowing and keep entertaining with just like a static game on the table, like one camera or two cameras, I guess. You know, it's like all that trying to put on a show, sort of, you know, and keep a game straight. 
it's like the ball the balls are juggling but when you're playing on by yourself at home just playing on a table in the quiet by yourself playing a solo game of course you're probably going to make less mistakes and you can look up rules right there sometimes i don't like to look up rules because it like interrupts the flow too so i'll just kind of go with what i think works sometimes just to keep the game going right but if you're at home and no restrictions you can play games look up things you can you're only judging yourself so you just assume you play perfect but nobody's checking your work so yeah it's just funny i always think it's funny when someone comes like bitching like i don't mind someone pointing out corrections please do but it's the ones that come in the comments and say like oh this is trash or nobody plays games correctly on the internet like every playthrough has mistakes or all the reviews get the rules wrong and whatever it's like i think it's the problem of juggling too many balls so it's like something's got to drop right and sometimes rules will go through right or some reading comprehension issues will misunderstand a rule or playing too many games that are from the same damn designer that have all the same rules and graphic design sometimes you mess up rules and i say that with the lcgs i remember playing so many lcgs from fantasy flight every time i sit down and play one i'm like how many cards do i draw my opening hand what's the mulligan rule in this one because it's like so many similarities, you can't remember everything. It's, it's crazy, right? Uh, I tolerate backseat board gaming. I don't mind it. It depends on the game and the stream, but I usually try to be up front to say, like, today, I was flat out like, please help me. We're all going to play together. Uh, those who don't know the game, those that do know the game, let's just all play. I want to discover this game with everybody because there's like a unique time. Like, I don't just bring games and put them on the table and open up a rule book and let's figure it out. I never do that. I, I don't feel like doing that ever. Uh, so it was kind of special today to be able to do that. Uh, so I kind of just embraced it, but I was totally open to it. But sometimes, the only thing I don't like is people backseat who know what's gonna come up and maybe spoil stuff. That's the only time it rubs me the wrong way. So if like you know going in that cave is gonna kill us, that's why I do usually polls for those kind of things. So even though you might know what's going to happen when we flip that card, go ahead and vote. Maybe vote so we don't flip the card. Maybe vote so we do flip the card. Just have some fun. But majority rules in that case. And you don't, I don't see your vote. So I don't know what you know in that. And I don't know who's voting. So it's kind of fun that way. Yeah, I don't mind backseat gaming. Sometimes it can get annoying if... I, sometimes it doesn't get annoying, but I like when it drives discussion. When I think I want to play a certain way, make a certain line of play, and someone who's played the game 150 times, <clears throat> George A, <laughs> will come in and say, no, this is the only way to play because of statistically, it's better to do this because it will lead to more points or more of this and that, right? Just an example. I'm not saying George does this, but George definitely plays games a lot, right? So when he comes in and says something, for example, hey, George, um, I'm just using George as an example. There's many other people who come into our streams and I'm sure you have hundreds of plays of games. I don't even know, right? But I just know George and what games he loves and he does play games a lot. And he'll really specialize in games, right? So when I'm playing a game only for my first, second, third time on stream ever, them coming in, sometimes I appreciate that, that high insight, that, that extra exper expertise. But sometimes that expertise will put blinders on and drive you in a certain line of play that narrows what the designer uh, meant to have open design space, right? Open decision space. So I'm coming at it as like, uh, you know, a fresh baby. I, I have the world in front of me. I could pick this play, this play, this play, have fun. Let's see what happens. Who cares, right? But sometimes when you've played a game so much, you then like break through all that smoke and mirrors of perceived options but it's really just two bright options and not the 10 you thought so you really should only pick from those two and sometimes i hate when that is ruined you know like someone will come in and say no only play that way but i'm like i want to play this way even if it's not going to turn out to be the best and i'll argue sometimes because there's still unknown information and when there's unknown information i like to sometimes just make educated guesses based on what i know versus what you know and just see what happens and it's a good way to like test the game to see if the designer came up with all of the options and answers to still make it a fun game, even if I pick a few wrong options, you know? Uh, and it's good to have other streams out there. So when people come in and say, oh, you should play this way. And there's already streamers out there who specialize in that game who are playing that way. 
I like to come in and play my own way. So then if somebody's watching it, they go, oh, and I have been commented and, 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 uh, uh, how do you say it? Like, uh, I've been like, uh, people have said that's a good thing that I've done is they like coming in to see the way I think sometimes is like outside the box or sometimes I look at a game in a different way and they find it interesting to see the way I make story choices in a game or gameplay choices because my learning through the hobby might be different and my experiences are based on different information than yours are, right? So I like that on my channel can be a different. So even though I might play the same game as 75 other channels, the way I play it, coming at it with the, my vision or my decision is might make interesting comment content even for someone who's already watched a whole bunch of streams so i like sometimes doing things the wrong way uh because it just it just makes it interesting right it like pokes and tests the game for holes and stuff uh if that all makes sense long-winded answer <laughs> Yes, Edward says, dude, we come for the mistakes, comments, and rants. It's all part of the gaming table. Yes, that's true. Yeah, spoilers are not okay. Agreed. Uh, we are playing games together with you during solo games. It's fun. Exactly. Exactly. I used to come at this like, I'm here to present. Everyone quiet. Let me show you this game. Play it as rules correct as I can. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye, right? And all recorded. But then when you get the chat involved, it's like, I didn't realize that was going to be a side effect of that. It's like, wait, we can all kind of play together. And we can all have fun together and have side conversation. We basically get treated as Rob's gaming tables like you're here, like you would at a game night. You don't show up to game night at the board game store or your friend's house and literally walk in, shut up, play game, walk out, you know, not talk about anything else, right? You come in, you say, what are you playing this week? And what games are you guys playing? What are you interested in? Oh, let's play this game. Oh, we have a rules mistake. Let's look it up. And oh, this reminds me about that other random game. Or, oh, I hate it when games do this, you know? Like you'll, you'll, that's what happens at game nights, right? That's what I'm trying to, trying to do here is play games in my basement with a whole bunch of people as best I can through the internet. But yeah, it makes sense. Elko says, I have that problem with Star Wars Rebellion. I know all the cards by heart, can anticipate cards of opponents, not fun playing as new players. Yeah, it's a side effect of like outplaying a game, right? But that's why I find if you like love a game, even though you love it, Move on to different games. Come back to it later because you'll forget things and, and you'll kind of not remember some of the things in the game, especially story games, legacy games, uh, games with lots of hidden information. And yeah, but it does, if you constantly play a competitive game too much, which I, I have been guilty of that too, right? Game of Thrones, a card game, L5R, Keyforge, whatever. I get obsessed, right? I start playing online in those games. I start reading up strategy. I start buying more decks and cards and like, you know, just, just researching and getting so deep down the rabbit hole, listening to podcasts, all that stuff. Right. And then I go to play with Mel who doesn't do any of that stuff. And then I crush her. And then it's like, Oh crap, I've advanced too far. And now I have to find others like that. And it's like hard to find people at your level sometimes when you get too deep into things. So it's like, you gotta be careful. It's like a double-edged sword, right? I can definitely understand that. But anyways, yeah, no problem, guys. Thank you all for being here. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to get out of here. We'll be back for sure Thursday. Uh, Kyle, I talked to him yesterday. He's still coming for Thursday. So we should be able to continue our playthrough of Hunter's AD 2114. I think that's what's called. Uh, I'll schedule another episode of this game for Friday. So subscribe. You can set a reminder for it when it pops up. Check your subscription feed. I'll go do it right after the stream. Uh, also... Frosthaven, we have Frosthaven scheduled for the weekend. And yeah, other than that, there's a few other games maybe that are going to pop up soon, but I don't want to say it because then if another game shows up and I switch the schedule, I like to stay loose each week, you know, kind of change things up as they show up. Because I keep getting notifications for certain games that are getting delayed on Kickstarter that I thought would be here already. Games are getting delayed shipping to Canada. Uh, yeah, so I thought I'd be playing some different games right now, but I have no shortage of games, so we're fine. But uh, yeah, so if certain games show up, I'm definitely stopping what I'm doing to play them. So yeah, and I might just lose interest or gain interest in other games too. So we'll see. Anyways, thank you again for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for supporting the channel. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next stream. Bye-bye.